long awaited, long awaited because I think about a month or two months ago, we we're supposed to have Prophet Charlie on, uh, but there was some situations that happened and here we, here he is today, here we are today. So long awaited, your awaited blessing is coming forth. This is the time of due appointment, due payment, due recompense. Amen. So God is going to let us know where you were watching from. Praise God. I, I want to give you some shout outs here. New Smyrna Beach, Florida, South Africa. We got South Africa now. So you already know I, I have a covenant love relationship with South Africa. Amen. I love our Safa family. Hello, Philippines. Prophetess Ivana, glory be to God. Come on. If you're excited, I want you to give us some hearts and likes because God's about to do something powerful here today. Again, we're starting off the month of October on the right foot, on the right footing, in the right place, amen, in the glory of God. So I want you to pray with me as you're logging in. Pray that there's no delays, no deviations, no disruptions, no demonic attack. I know last time myself and Prophet Leon, right, I mean, Facebook was going through a whole glitch, right? This was right after uh, September 11th and right after the passing of the Queen. So Facebook was going through a whole glitch, you know, but still we broke records in that time. So God is good. Come on, people of God. Let's get the numbers up. Let's get the views up. Get the atmosphere, expectation, anticipation up. Because I will bring in the men of God in one more minute. Come on, people of God. Come on, Rabbi Torah, bro. Pray in the spirit. Pray with fire expectation. Because the prophets are here. The men of God are here in this room, in this broadcast, in this channel, exclusively for you right here, right now, in this appointed time. And this is not just a word for you. It's a word for your family. It's a moment. It is the divine Kairos appointment for your family, your ministry, your tribe, your nation, your region. Amen. Hallelujah. So let us know where you are watching from. And we speak fire upon that region. Fire. Somebody shout fire. Fire on your region, your city, in the name of Jesus. My goodness. Well, people of God, I want you to give the Lord a mighty clap because, number one, God is good. And number two, there is a prophetic convergence that is of the doing of God. It's not the doing of man, but it really is the doing of God. Amen. So I want to thank all of you for logging in, tapping in, joining, and sharing this broadcast. Because, like I said, it is our honor and privilege to release the word of the Lord to you today. Amen. I want everybody to give us some hearts and likes as we welcome the man of God. First, I want to welcome, of course, Prophet Leon Dupree, all the way from South Africa, our good friend. Prophet Leon, you and I, we've been doing these prophetic convergences. This is maybe our third or fourth one, you know, but, uh, you know, God is birthing a prophetic convergence. So good to have you, my friend. God bless you, Prophet Leon. Hey, Dr. Ben, thanks a lot. We're excited for tonight. I believe that... Uh... Uh, God is going to share revelation. I believe that uh, deep calls out onto deep, and uh, I carry something uh, short but deep that I want to release. I believe that Prophet Charlie is the same, and I want to encourage everybody, stay online. I see people from all all over South Africa, Namibia, United Kingdom, United States. Uh, I saw Australia, New Zealand. Um, uh, I saw so many countries. I saw Pakistan. I saw India. Uh, all over, all over, and obviously all over the United States, all over South Africa, all over Africa. And uh, I see we are already touching good numbers. And last time we did break records, I think we went over a thousand live viewers on, on, on Facebook. And that's just Facebook. You know, that's not uh, YouTube. I don't like Facebook very much. I'm, I have a thing against Facebook, but uh, that is just, that is just me. But thanks, Dr. Ben. Thanks for having us. That's so funny, Prophet. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, God uses these platforms for his glory, right? So we got to keep preaching and releasing because witches, pedophiles are on these platforms. So we got to preach the truth and as much as Facebook tries to limit and censor us, we know that we cannot be canceled. Amen. And last time we broke 1,200. We broke 1,200. Yeah. yeah. So I'm believing today we're going to break 1,500 in Jesus' name. Amen. And everybody, let's welcome the prophet, my good friend, the man of God, prophet Charlie Shamp. God bless you, my friend. How are you doing, sir? Uh, it's awesome to be on here with you, Pastor Ben. Uh, we believe that today is going to be a powerful day of prophetic utterance. And we know that God has a word for each and every person that's watching. So please, wherever you're tuned in from, you can share the broadcast. It helps to break uh, the algorithm uh, that they're trying to suppress here on Facebook. But Pastor Ben, it's awesome to be with you today. 
Praise God, Prophet. And uh, we had a blast. I'm so glad. We were in Hawaii just what, two months ago, three months ago. And uh, of course, your lovely wife, Miss Bryn, was there. And we had a blast there. And we already got some powerful things planned for next year, which I'm really excited about. Amen. Amen. Uh, Hawaii was amazing. And uh, we know that God is doing something on those islands. Absolutely. And next year, I'm, I'm already planning a crusade in Samoa and the island. So I'm really excited about the island, the Aloha life. But people of God, I want you to give us some hearts and likes. Ms. Dolores, if you could just put all three of us on, on the screen just for a few minutes. I want everybody to give us some hearts and likes. And as we're about to start right now, I want the prophets, let's just stretch out our hands towards the people and pray in agreement that every single person that is logging in and tapping into this broadcast, that the power and the fire of God would be released. The miraculous, the supernatural would target you, would come upon you like never before. We are in agreement now in Jesus' name. The angels are being released. Cancellations of the spirit. Curses are being reversed. And the power of God is falling upon yes. us in the name of Jesus. And all the God's people say amen, amen, and amen. My goodness, I'm so excited. God is good. I want you to give the Lord a clap wherever you're watching from because... It's it's one thing to it's one thing to release the word of the Lord. It's another thing to come together in an alliance, a convergence, a company, because we're all busy. We all have very, very busy schedules. We're all doing things for the Lord. But it's it's a unique, rare thing for us to come together. So I just want to thank and honor to both of you. I love both of you deeply and greatly. And uh, both of you have been such tremendous gifts to myself, and I know also to the body of Christ. We're going to start off today, um, what is the Lord saying for this new Hebrew year, 5783? Okay, if you've been following me, you know, uh, I've already been releasing the words the Lord said, 5783, it's the year of resurrection, dominion, and divine direction. Um, but first and foremost, I want to defer over to Prophet Leon, and we'll go over to Prophet Charlie. Talk to us, um, what has the Lord been speaking to you about this year and this season and then um, we're just going to keep moving. So if you're excited, say amen. Go ahead, properly and talk to us. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Thanks, Dr. Ben. Thanks, everyone. Just uh, share the broadcast tag. Somebody, I see people uh, going on. I'm going to get into the year right now. I just want to say hello to people here or just call them out. I see uh, Marilo uh, watching from Durban. Guys, let us know once again where you're watching from. And also just drop a number. Say how many are watching with you. I know there's a lot of families watching. There's a lot of people that have groups of three or four that is watching right now. I want you to receive the word of the Lord. You know, um, uh, uh, no prophet will have exactly the same, but I can tell you this. We'll carry the mind of God that will uh, just uh, be the mind of God for this hour, for this season. And uh, uh, Dr. Ben, I was just, you know, what I carried in my spirit for the last I would say the last two months relative to the year that is coming is uh, really, you know, you would see in, I think it is in Daniel chapter number five, verse 25, where we see that, or just before that, from about five onwards, where we see that, uh, that uh, the feast that, that, um, that, uh, that Nebuchadnezzar had and, uh, you know, but something very peculiar happened. There. Obviously, the finger of God, the hand of God came in, did the writing on the wall. But we see how the prophet has been left out of that feast. Now, over a thousand people were invited to the feast there. They began to worship uh, on the gods that, uh, you know, of silver, gold, and so on, wood. That and obviously they took all the gold out of the temple and out of the house of God, and they were celebrating for that. And we see the judgment hand of God coming in. And I saw the writing on the wall, but the Lord didn't speak. I understand a lot of prophets have always a word on the writing on the wall. That's not really what I have, but just that there's, there's this, the, the weighing of scale or the scales of judgment that is hanging in the atmosphere. I see the closure of 2022 and 2023 coming into culmination. So we see 2020, 21 being a culmination and then 2020, 2023. Uh, you know, we saw a lot of ministers, a lot of men of God being exposed, uh, fallen. You know, what we have seen is especially the old wineskins, the, uh, I would call it when people would fall into sin and that sin is being exposed and they get back into ministry. They kind of like carrying a, uh, I don't know how to say it, but a second hand anointing. They carry a chip. You know, when you in ministry, when you carry the glory of God, you carry a over 
flow. Uh, but once somebody falls into a, and I'm, sp- I'm speaking of a great sin, a sin that speaks of, uh, you know, where they have to be put on discipline or it's been made public, exposes their ministry. You can be a priest. We are kings and priests. You can be a priest and you receive forgiveness instantly. But your kingship and your position is lost. When your position is lost, you're no longer operating in that place of overflow. You're now running in a place where you continually have to go pray to get a word of the Lord. Uh, or you're just not operating in that overflow, the glory of God. And we have seen that with a lot of ministries. We've seen ministries moving in the seeker sense that if in South Africa, the prophetic is kicked out. Listen, I am uh, there. I cannot even count on three fingers in the nation of South Africa of prophets who has a public platform. You know, or let me say two fingers apart from me. There is, they have been chased out of the nation, chased out of the country. Uh, They try to do it with me and I'm speaking of big networks and so on. The Lord said to me, because Daniel was kept out of the feast, that there is a weighing of the scales that is beginning to be happening. There's a tipping over of the scale, a tipping point that is taking place. And, uh, you know, when a prophet is left out, you'll see the hand of God coming in with judgment. We see Daniel being left out. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar, who's the son of the other Nebuchadnezzar, we see him having this feast, forgetting about the prophets and the hand of the Lord coming in. And then the Lord showed me this uh, courtroom setting. If we look at the image of God from Genesis to Revelation, a lot of people say God is love, God is uh, mercy, but the most consistent image of God and the setting of heaven is a courtroom from Genesis to Revelation. We see the courtroom of heaven from Genesis 1 verse 1 where God says, let us make man in our image. We see it going forth to uh, to Daniel. We see a Job 1 verse 1, 1 verse, uh, 1 verse 6, uh, 2 verse 1. We see how Satan presented himself in the presence of the Lord amongst the sons of God. We see the council of heaven, Psalm 82. We see uh, Elohim sitting in the council of other Elohims. I believe it is 1 Kings 22. I think it is 1 Kings 22 where uh, the Lord said, you know, how shall we make, um, how shall we make, was it, it wasn't Saul, who was it? Uh, 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 have, a, uh, have a lying spirit in his mouth. Uh, he said, well, let's put a lying spirit in his mouth, uh, in, the, in the mouth of the prophets, but sorry. Uh, but uh, it was it was regarding, not Saul, it was regarding someone. I'm just paraphrasing here, just the courtroom setting. And we see how a spirit appeared uh, and presented itself in front of the Lord. Scripture doesn't say whether it's the evil spirit or a good spirit. And uh, we see how, um, I think it's Ayab, uh, how, uh, how, how we see how, um, how uh, when Saul, when David received the Spirit of the Lord by Samuel, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon David, the very next verse says that Saul, uh, the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord came upon Saul. You know, so you have this, image in Hebrew where God is in charge of everything. When we look at generational curses, when we look at those things, it's legal uh, contracts that has to be lifted or not in the courtroom of heaven. A lot of people think curses come from Satan. No curse originates from Satan. It originates from the courtroom of heaven, but it is Satan that presents himself as an accuser uh, to the brethren in front of the Lord. Uh, so we see this whole setting of the courtroom and justice being taken place. Then we get into we get into Zechariah 3 verse 3 where Joshua was, uh, you know, as the high priest was standing, we see accused of the brethren next to him. Uh, we see again the courtroom setting and when we see how the angel of the Lord came and removed his clothing uh, and gave him new robes. In fact, the scripture says rich robes are being put upon him. And the Lord beginning to about this with the coming year that there's a tip of the scales there's a weighing of the scales that uh, uh, you know judgment is coming there's good or bad that is coming that is a payment coming but the accusations that's been made against the saints a lot of saints received accusations from 2020 up until now many felt heaviness the spirit of heaviness on them many felt uh, the weight of depression on them many prophets went into their caves many prophets including myself really especially the last I was here, just didn't want to be online, just didn't want to really carry out and bring the word of the Lord because we were attacked from left and right. I don't know if it's the same in the United States, but in South Africa, we were silenced from the biggest ministers in this nation that just, uh, I, I was in a meeting, I think I spoke to you about it, Dr. Ben, where, you know, we were a group, a panel that was being preached, that was preaching, and, and it was the biggest ministers in this nation, or the most well-known in this nation, with the largest churches, and they were just nailing the prophetic. In fact, one minister made a public statement, and this is one of the biggest ministers in the nation, said that they'll make sure that they'll remove the prophets out of this nation. Now, you know, when that happens, you're usually 
see the judgment of God coming to the church. You see the power of God leaving the church. You see the presence and the glory of the Lord leaving the church. You see Ichabod coming in. Uh, but God has prospered his prophets even behind the scenes. Uh, you know, and uh, but this is what the Lord said to me, that finger of accusation is going to remove the pointing of the finger in the midst of the people is going to be removed where the prophet has been left out is going to include the prophet in or the hand of god is going to come in and the clothing of accusations that has come upon the body of christ will be changed with rich robes and the lord said to me from the month of september this year i prophesied it from january that from the month of september we're going to see incredible prosperity being released to those who are situated in goshen to those who have been protected there are many that will be protected from the onslaught of the economy from the downfall of the economy and this fear try to grip many of god's people of the economy that is coming and the downfall that is coming and the uh, the crash that is going to come you know there's going to be a shift of superpowers that'll come soon which is going to and the uh, fall of the king was the uh, sorry of the queen was the first indication of that and i know we went to do that but that's kind of like what the lord said with me he also said he's going to remove and place a new turban on the head of the church meaning there's going to be a new leadership coming in there's going to be a uh, new wineskins that is going to come in and he's going to force that despite what any old wineskin is going to say many people many many young apostles young prophets young ministers have risen up and they found themselves being excluded or rejected by fathers and they've said that you know, but we're trying to fulfill the, the principles of submission. We're trying to fulfill the principles of covering, but they find themselves continually being rejected, yet their ministries is growing. And God is saying, listen, I'm putting a new system in place. I'm creating a new wine scheme. If you want to try to be part of a network, uh, you're not going to be able to grow. And I know this is a very contradictory word, but this is what I carry in my spirit and that we have seen on our side. My, my goodness, prophet, listen, I, I'm ready to throw a shoe across the room because you, you're preaching right now. You preach a prophet. And uh, let me tell you, I'm I'm in 100 percent agreement with everything that that you just shared, because this is um, this is a season of judgment and justice. Right. Judgment and justice. Five, seven, eighty three uh, or twenty, twenty three, three in Hebrew is Gamel and Gamel comes from the root word Gamel in Hebrew, G-E-M-U-L, Gemul. And what Gemul means, it means the dealing of hands. Gemul in Hebrew means the dealing of hands. So God is going to deal with hands in this year. And so Gemul, or the dealing of hands, it means retribution, wage, payment, payback, uh, and recompense. So this is a year, like you said, prophet, where many, many to kill a parson, the finger is on the wall, the writing is on the wall, yeah. where judgment and justice is coming. And I want to read a quick passage, and then I'm going to pass it over to prophet Charlie, because I'm telling you, we're feeling the bubblings of the, of the Nabi anointing right now, because it's just sparking off in the spirit. But you see here, Daniel chapter 7, verse 10, the Bible says, the courts was seated and the books were opened. Right now, the courts are open and in session, and the books are open. And just like Prophet Leon said, there is the accuser of the brethren we see in, in the story of Job, or the accuser of the brethren that uh, is written out in the book of Revelation. But the adversary, the accuser, the antagonizer, the enemy that is oppressing, suppressing, that Jezebelic spirit that is trying to lie to you and lie about you, is coming before God in the courts. But we understand that the blood of Jesus, the name of Yeshua, the final sacrifice, the full propitiation of sin is done once and for all. So your enemies are about to get silenced. The demonic, heinous, evil agenda of the left, of the globalists is about to be put down, exposed and exterminated in Jesus' name. And that's what's happening right now as the courts are in session. And the books are open because God has opened up the books right now. And up to even Yom Kippur, which is Tuesday and Wednesday, the Lord is beginning to release judgment and he's releasing decisions and finalization. So we declare that a good word and a good report, the just word of God will be released to release recompense, retribution and payback on your behalf. Come on, I want you to give the Lord a mighty clap before Come on. that. Amen. Now, we are in the days of 10 days of all. We are in Yom Kippur. Uh, we are in the new Hebrew year 5783. Prophet Charlie, talk to us, man of God, 
and please take as much time as, as you feel. But Tantos, man of God, just what comes to your mind, your spirit? What has God been speaking to you concerning this year, this season? And even as you're hearing what my son, Brother Leon, has just shared, talk to us, man of God. Well, again, Pastor Ben, it's great to be on with you. And we know that we are living in very challenging times, uh, but very anointed times for those that are walking closely to the spirit of the Lord. Um, one of the things that the Lord has been really speaking to me about recently, and I'll get to a variety of things that God has kind of spoken. Um, but one of the things that the spirit of the Lord has been speaking to me about is that there are some in this last season that were snake bitten. They were bitten and they, if you understand certain types of snakes, um, one of the snakes in North America is a rattlesnake. And some have spiritually been bitten where their minds have become rattled, rattled by religion, uh, rattled by the spirit of the world. And I love what Prophet Leon said that God is coming to give a new turban to place it on specifically the priest Joshua, the high priest, which represented Jesus Christ, a Joshua generation that God is giving to us a new mind where we begin to look and see from a different perspective, a higher perspective. And God is going to break free many people from the cage, the confinements of their mind, uh, the spirit of religion, and also previous moves of God that have become stagnated and stale, have limited um, the children of God from pressing into greater exploits. Psalm 91, verse 3, this is a word that the Lord kind of started to ring in my ears just over the last several weeks. It says that surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise, noisome pestilence. Now, the snare there uh, literally translates to mean a bird trap. And there have been prophets who have been trapped. They have found themselves in a snare. They found themselves in a trap. But the Lord is going to break open the prison gates. Some have felt like they haven't been able to hear the voice of the Lord clearly. You know, I live in a place where it's, uh, it's like 24-7 open heaven. Um, living in Moravian Falls, you, you find yourself awake many nights uh, ministering to the Lord. And, of course, we have a very powerful intercessory team that uh, gets around around 4 to 5 in the morning and prays in the Holy Ghost till about 7 corporately. So we're cultivating an atmosphere of an open heaven. So it's very easy to hear because as you go higher on the mountain, uh, there is in the natural a line uh, that won't allow snakes to breathe. In fact, they call it a snake line. And as an eagle, we are called to live in the mountain, not in the valley. But there have been some uh, prophetic people that have been trapped in the valley. And they've been restricted, restrained, and uh, even uh, pigeon-held. Some have been uh, in chicken coops. Uh, but the Lord is opening up a way for them to escape and begin to breathe the rarefied air of heaven. And they're going to begin to come up into higher heights. And the Spirit of the Lord is going to allow them to see from a different perspective, begin to hear 
from a different realm. And there's a greater responsibility that's being handed, I believe, to those that are coming into their full inheritance as uh, a new apostolic and prophetic move is beginning to emerge. It's not that I don't respect what has been done in the past, but there is uh, a changing of the guard right now, a very significant time where there is a crossing over from what we have known into something that is very new. And uh, I would much rather be a novice in the new than a professional in the old. And so many of the things that we are encountering uh, personally, my wife and myself, as well as uh, those that we are laboring among are new things. And some of those things we're, we're not even really at, at, at liberty to speak of, but we know that the spirit of the Lord is calling us to a higher place, a higher place of consecration, a higher place of dedication, because what is going to begin to emerge uh, uh, is a new wineskin, uh, new apostolic centers uh, where the move of God uh, will go on for days, weeks, months, night after night. And uh, God is going to begin to entrust those that uh, will make a habitation for him, uh, a place where he will come and dwell and rest, where the miracles will be effortless. It will not come just through one man, but it will come through an atmospheric, uh, synergistic community that is full of the Holy Ghost and fire. And we're already beginning to see that. I mean, just a couple of weeks ago, there was a, a young man who was pronounced dead, brain dead, a pastor in the area that we live in. Never met this man, never have uh, had coffee with him or sat with him at all. Uh, just a prayer request came into the uh, headquarters. We began to pray. They had pronounced him dead. And it went across all the news agencies in the area that suddenly he came back to life. What God is doing is not uh, restricted to third world nations, developing nations. But what God is doing right now is he's de developing a fresh, move of the Holy Spirit, and he's raising up apostolic leaders that are going to uh, cause the army of the Lord to advance. I like that prophet uh, Leon went to talk about um, the book of Daniel, because I've been there as well. The book of Daniel um, is a very powerful book. It's an end time book. It's a book that we need to pay very close attention to uh, in the time and season that we're living in. Um, one of the scriptures that has stood out to me the most and very significant for the season that we're coming into is Daniel chapter 11, verse 32. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. The key to this specific passage is knowing God. It's not in knowing the who's who in the charismatic zoo. It is not in knowing your favorite uh, televangelist. It is in simply knowing your God. God is going to begin to elevate and begin to release a fresh anointing upon those that are seeking him face to face. The book of Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And all these other things are going to be added unto you. There is a place where you can seek God so significantly, so heavily, that he comes and visits you with the word of the Lord daily. 
And when he begins to speak, everyone in the body of Christ knows that you are hearing from the Lord. They cannot stop that. They cannot stifle that. They cannot try. Uh, they can try with all of their might uh, to hinder that. But at the end of the day, if God be for you, no man can be against you. And the Lord is going to choose those that he wants to raise up. And they are going to begin to do mighty exploits in the earth. Exploits that will baffle many minds. And they will begin to see that surely God is among them. I think for a season, to be very honest with you, there has been some uh, trickery, uh, some things that have been smoking mirrors. But what God is going to begin to display in the earth are men of God that carry the voice of the Lord. And it will be undeniable. They will be distinct uh, in their uh, ministry. They will uh, be supernatural in their delivery. And they will bring dominion into the regions and their areas that they live in. And there's going to be a lot of exploits that will be done because God is bringing a supernatural strength upon the body again. And they're bringing those that are uh, lions in the spirit. This is, not a, this is not a tame move. This is a lion move. This is uh, a war move. And God is raising up spiritual warlords in the earth right now that are going to begin to take territory for him supernaturally. So that's just a few of the things. God's kind of speaking to me about, um, I don't want to, I want to give time for people to, uh, for you guys to interject, but I feel that we're a very significant time, a crossing over time, a time where God is anointing uh, fresh ministries, even some that have not been known are going to begin to come forth and lead companies of 50s, hundreds, thousands. Remember, it's not the uh, necessarily the amount of warriors that you have. It's in the depth uh, of their strength that matters. Gideon was told that he had to get rid of people. So I believe that some of the strongest uh, churches that we're going to see may not be in the thousands, but might be in the Gideon's 300. My goodness, people of God, I, I want you to give us some hearts and likes. And if if you're receiving what the prophet, the man of God is saying, I, I want you to say amen. Because this is a time where God is dividing lands. And I love what you said, Prophet Charlie, because in this season of Yom Kippur, where justice, judgment, decisions are being made, the Lord began speaking to me about the lots of land being divided. And here in Numbers 33, 54, the Bible says, distribute the land by lots according to your clans. So there is a divine distribution right now, a divine assignment, uh, dividing lines. Things are being released and assigned to different people. So there's lots of land. There's lots of people groups. There's lots. That's why in the Old Testament and even many cultures today, they cast lots. The Bible says they cast the lots for the robe, the clothes of Jesus. So right now there is an allotment taking place. What does that mean? That means that there is a divine assigning coming over your life. So God is beginning to release the plunder of the Lord, the plundering of the last season of the enemies of Egypt, the plundering of the last season, even the mantles of the fathers and mothers. So there is a release coming. And those who continue to humble themselves in brokenness, contrition, and humility, they are the ones that God's going to turn from a nobody to become a somebody. From the least of these to become a mighty nation, to become a thousand. And that grace and that anointing is here in this room. And if you believe in it, if you receive it, say hallelujah. And I want you to give us some heart to life. Share this on your wall because 
We're going to go back over to Prophet Leon. Prophet Leon, what, what are your thoughts, man of God, as you're hearing Prophet Charlie uh, share what he just shared right now? What, what are your thoughts, man of God, concerning... Uh, I, I love what Prophet Charlie shared about the snake line. Come on, the snake line. The Bible says we will trample on snakes and scorpions. And we understand 5783, 2023, 3 in Hebrews Gamel, which means the foot. So this is the year where your feet are going to trample on snakes and scorpions. Your feet is going to walk and ascend the hill of the Lord. Your feet, someone say, I got fire on my feet. It's your, it's the year of the foot, of the big foot, of the big feet. So Prophet Leon, talk to us. What comes to your mind, man of God, just in response as we're moving forward here? Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Dr. Uh, what Prophet Charlie said was so powerful. I, I'm jealous of Moravian Falls. You know, we're sitting in, in South Africa where it is, it is a total different atmosphere at this moment. It's continually warfare all the time, uh, you know, but... Um, and uh, obviously a prophet needs a God and a prophet needs a, uh, a, a atmosphere, an environment to really hear from God. So we're busy cultivating it on this side, but it is, it is tough. And I think, you know, as, as Prophet Charlie was speaking, um, you know, there's significant things that I've written down before we came on that is just lining up. As I said, guys, we might not say the exact same thing, but we carry the mind of God and God in his uh, diversity always speaks uh, one word and uh, you know that is his mind that is his intention and when it comes to prophets it is uh I, I was thinking of this dr ben especially with what is to come you know that uh god has been beginning to remove the wheat from the tears and i'm speaking within the body of christ those who walk on old a revelation those who carry old revelation and they want to bring where god has moved 10 years ago 20 years ago into today and i'm speaking of the charismatic move i'm not even speaking of any denominational things behind i'm just speaking of the pure charismatic moves they still want to move or, or let god move the way he moved 10 years ago and, and god will take prophets into a into a place that is very strange um you know that's why prophets are very rejected uh, well, I found myself to be very rejected as God raised me up through many years. We have, uh, you know, I've the only people that I could relate to really was other prophets, people who could understand what experiences you're experiencing. And, uh, you know, but through that, God speaks. And I believe he always separates his prophets. Uh, let them have experiences. Let them, uh, and experiences that quite frankly, other gifts will call heretical and other gifts will call uh, might I even touch on new age, you know, but it is pure and it is always in Christ, those things that we are experiencing. And, and through that, God has begun to minister to me about the value of the prophets. And I've ministered on something that just jumped out of my spirit this week is that um, when they asked, Je when Jesus said, who do men say that I am in Matthew 16 verse 19, they answered him. And as they answered him, this thing exploded in me, Dr. Ben. I've never read it in this way. They answered him. They said, some say you are Elijah. So I can understand, okay, the spirit of Elijah had to come back and they expected the spirit of Elijah to come back and to reappear. That's okay. You know, um, then they said, some say that you are John uh, the Baptist. And uh, I can understand John was living those days. But when they began to say the next few words, they said, some say you are Jeremiah. And some say you are the other prophets. Now, you know, that doesn't make sense. Jeremiah has been dead for thousands of years. How would they think and how would it be in the belief system of that society that Jeremiah could appear to them? And then as I was ministering, this thing jumped out of my spirit where the Lord said to me, and I'm preaching to our people and, you know, and if I make a mistake, I'm on live stream and we got, we got a good influence and so on that I'll be taken to task. But then the Lord ministered to me and he said, the spirit of a prophet has no limitation. So, you know, then I jumped over and we see how Saul began to call up the spirit of Samuel. Uh, he went to the witch of Endor, called up the spirit of Samuel. But then the Lord took me to Jesus. Now, I'm not endorsing Saul's thing at all. I'm just speaking about the no limitations of the spirit of a prophet and how God allowed the spirit of Saul to come forth. Then you look at Jesus being on the Mount of Transfiguration, Matthew 17, verse 3. We see Moses and we see uh uh, Elijah being on the mountain and as they are on the mountain uh, you know there's something very peculiar with those two individuals because Moses was on a mountain when he encountered the glory of God and then Elijah was in a cave where he wrapped the mantle around his head and he heard the still small voice of God now when Moses was on the mountain the Bible says that the Lord put him in the cleft of the rock and he said my face you will see uh, sorry 
My face you will not see, but my back you will see. And we know that doesn't mean God's face. It means everything from before uh, God uh, began. And then, you know, he's back everything from that moment on onward. And, and uh, you know, the Lord began to minister to me to say that when you look at the mountain where Moses was on, where Elijah was on, it's a similar mountain. And when you see uh, Jesus being on the Mount of Transfiguration, he appeared and then Moses and Elijah appeared to him. And when you look at quantum dynamics, you know, if you have point A, which is Moses and Elijah, and point B, which is Jesus. If you want to see what is the shortest line between those, you draw a straight line. But when you get into quantum dynamics, moving the spirit, especially where prophets begin to move, begin to operate in uh, with the power of thought, with the power of uh, just uh, where there's no limitation in the natural realm. Obviously, we understand according to the law of the quantum of dynamics, this time can be bent and that point can be exactly the same. So the moment that Jesus was on the mountain, you know, could have been the moment where Moses was on the mountain and he saw into the future and he saw the Lord Jesus Christ. Elijah hearing the voice of God and they appearing. Then we see, but my, my, my intention of explaining this is the no boundaries and limitations of the spirit of a prophet that I believe that God is going to use the apostolic and prophetic gifts in such a way. When we look at the value of a prophet, you know, John the Baptist, when he was, when uh, he was about to be murdered, you know, Herod, saw his daughter dancing and then Herod asked, he said to his daughter, he said, listen, you've done the most beautiful dance. Uh, ask of me anything up to the half of, the, of my kingdom and I will give it to you. She didn't ask for properties. She didn't ask for gold. She didn't ask for all his kingdom. She said, give me the head of John the Baptist. You know, so we see the value of a prophet being up to half of a kingdom and uh, how, uh, you know, this value and this limitless boundaries of the spirit of a prophet that God would choose to use the spirit of Elijah to announce the coming of the Messiah. Uh, you know, uh, we see these things and we see the ability of revelation. And I believe that the Lord is going to cause the church to move in such depth of revelation. Prophet Charlie was sharing on old, rev or old tale revelation that is going to be done with these new these old wineskins are holding on to old revelation and they refuse to let go and let god move in the new you know the bible says i cannot pour out new wine a uh, soul had to be removed the moment that the spirit of the lord came upon david the next verse the spirit of the lord departed from saul and we see how an office has been opened up for david to come I mean, a problem has been created for David to come. And you said something earlier, Dr. Ben, you, directly after I spoke, you said that the books of heaven, that God is saying, opening up the books of heaven. Before I came into the broadcast, I had a vision. When I was speaking about the scales of the Lord, I had this vision. I saw the Lord saying to me, I'm opening up the books of heaven. You know, uh, when we get into the books of heaven, there's a whole different revelation on it. You have the you have the book of heaven and you have the book of the Lamb's, uh, the, the, the Lamb's book of life and you have the book of heaven. The book of heaven is a type of a, a reputational book or a type of a, um, a, uh, a book of the elite. You'd see Moses saying, remove and blot my name out of the book of life. So it's a book of life. The book of life is not the Lamb's book of life. It's two different books. And uh, he had a revelation that you have those who are walking in a certain realm with God where, uh, you know, once you're part of, the, and I want to say the elite has exclusivity, but God is those whom he shares his secrets to. And uh, you see that part of the book of life. You know, it's not the Lamb's book of life. A lot of people misinterpret that scripture as the Lamb. Life. But I believe God is going to create, the Lord is going to begin to bring great revelation in to the church that's going to cause an offense to um, to the uh, to the to an older wineskin that is going to cause great houses of revelation that's going to be birthed, houses of the apostolic gifts. You know, the Lord said to me, where it took 30, 40 years for an apostolic gift to be established, he will put it upon young people right now and they'll be called apostles and prophets and many of your old God is going to fight against that movement and that they're going to be fighting against themselves and they're going to be fighting against the Lord, uh, you know, until a new is coming in. And uh, that's what I see. You know, they said, in fact, from 2022, to 2023 is a shifting of a season. You know, we're over with the Shemitah going into a new dispensation. The Lord said to me that he's bringing in a whole new dispensation. We saw a release of deliverance taking place and it's getting all over the world, but the Lord said to me there will be dispensation of joy and holiness that's going to come in and revelation. Revelation unlike ever before, but where it's going to begin to be acceptable by the people of God. You know, the things I'm preaching at this moment in our church, um, I cannot preach in mega churches they will throw me out yet those who connected to the prophet 
their capacity of their spirit is enlarged where they can receive these things. My good, my goodness. I, I want everybody to say my capacity is enlarging because you're right, Prophet Leon. I mean, and I know Prophet Charlie understands this. You know, we can only go to certain places. Yes, we can break it open. We can break open certain wells, but we can only go to certain places. Number one, when God sends us, of course, number one. Number two, when there's honor and hunger in a place because we don't want to go to a place and be rejected or not received or be castrated and crucified, right? And so we need to really go where the Lord is leading us and where the ground is ready for a move of God for a revival. Otherwise, you know, you could go and invite somebody to be a one session conference speaker. I tell people all the time, I'm sorry, I'm not a conference speaker. I'm not a one or two session type of speaker, okay? I, I'm a revivalist. I'm here to see a move of God break out. So, you know, it's going to be a holy chaos, holy pandemonium, a holy breakout, because the Bible says that where there is an ox, the harvest is plenty, but it's going to be messy. And so God is releasing the ox anointing. And so I love what you're, what you're sharing, probably, Leon, because God is raising up companies, wineskins, groups, couplings uh, of, of people that are able to go deep, able to go deep. And that's why in this year, especially this year, from 2020 to this year, because two in Hebrew means unity and division, unity and separation. So this year, God separated the sheep from the goat. There was a lot of shifting and sifting. Peter, Satan came to me and asked, because he wants to shift you like wheat. So there's been a shifting and a sifting in the body of Christ. And why? Because this year, three means resurrection, the third day anointing, the third year anointing. It's a year of resurrection and revelation. So all, everything you've gone through is for a divine purpose. And we want to encourage you because I understand the journey. I mean, man, I've been slimed and slandered and accused. And, you know, even as a pastor's kid, my father was a pastor. I grew up in the church as a pastor's kid. We went through so much through religion. Okay, and remember, it was the Pharisees that crucified Jesus, right? The religious spirit. But we want to encourage you, people of God. You may be a minister. You may be a prophet, an apostle, an emerging voice, wherever you're watching from. We want to encourage you, myself, Prophet Leon, Prophet Charlie. We want to encourage you and release strength and grace to you because we understand. But let me tell you, as you're being purged and purified in this testing season, the Lord will raise up your horn. God will pour out the oil. God will deliver you and he will present you before the world like Mordecai with double honor. He will bless you in front of your enemies. But keep the course because we need you in Jesus' name. If you are an emerging prophetic apostolic voice, I want you to say I am in Jesus' name. Prophet Charlie, what are your thoughts in response to what Prophet Leon shared? And then afterwards, I, I want to talk about some prophetic words God is speaking to the body of Christ now in this season. Go ahead, Prophet Charlie. Wow, there's just so much, um, you know, divine, supernatural synergy that's taking place today. Uh, I'm just grateful for both of you uh, having me on and allowing me to participate in um, all that God is saying. I, I know that we as the body of Christ, those that are watching this broadcast, have to uh, distinctly come into our positions, come into uh, the vision that God has put on your life. And you have to begin to uh, navigate and uh, for some course correct into the field uh, that God has divinely destined for you to glean in this is a, a a season where god wants to direct us but those that are sons of god will be led by the spirit of god and sonship isn't talking about gender it's talking about authority it's talking uh, about those that are sealed by the spirit of god and are wholly devoted to him one of the mantles that i saw falling upon the earth was the mantle of ruth chapter 2 verse 2 where ruth told naomi that the field was ready the ears of corn 
were ready and that she would find grace. And he, and she spoke to Naomi and she told her to go into that field. I believe that this is a time of sending. Mm. This is a time of us sending. And this is a time of supernatural sight in vision or visitation for vision so that you can find your position uh, so the grace of God will begin to pour out upon you. It is the grace and mercy of God that leads us into our specific path and destiny in the journey of the Lord. And for some, uh, you might have fallen into a ditch, but this is a time where God's going to pick you back up. He's going to sit you, sit you on uh, the correct uh, road, and you're going to move forward with strength. I want to say this. The things that God has called many to do are, are, not, are not for uh, the swift, but they are for those that stay the course. A lot of times we look at the, what everybody else is doing around us, and uh, we see the acceleration taking place on this one or that one. And we can uh, try to duplicate what they're doing instead of focusing on what God says for us. Uh, I found that the slow and steady uh, always wins. And so it, it's a time of um, not just uh, reaping the harvest, but recognizing the seed that you're planting in the ground. Because there are some seeds that spring up yearly, but then there are those seeds that you have to tend to, like the, like the seed of the olive, that take up to 18 years for that particular tree to grow until it ever begins to bear fruit. But after that 18-year period, it is up to a thousand years that that uh, olive tree will produce a harvest. Uh, for some, they've been looking uh, at your tree and saying, there's no fruit on this tree. It's unproductive. It's not flourishing. But what they don't recognize is that you're, you're a specific tree. And that God has called you to a specific field. And when you find that field and you allow the Lord to cultivate it, you will begin to see within the crushing, within the breaking, there is going to come forth a oil that will produce uh, supernaturally for you. That will be a blessing. There are, there are men and there are women of, of God that God has not called you into vocational ministry, but he has called you into the mountains of society to begin to apostolically take them for the spirit of God. You have a prophetic anointing on your life, but that prophetic anointing is not for a pulpit. That prophetic anointing is for uh, understanding uh, times and seasons. It's for understanding uh, uh, demographics, charts. It's for uh, understanding markets in the marketplace so that you can be a funnel for the kingdom of heaven to finance the end time harvest of souls. And for some, uh, there's been a frustration, but today God's breaking that frustration off of you. And God is going to place you on your perfect path. He's going to put you in the field that he has called you to, and you're going to find satisfaction. You're going to find uh, the blessing of God, and you're going to see uh, the generation in your lineage uh, redeemed. I, I really love what Prophet Leon said uh, about deliverance because we have been in a, a season of deliverance, uh, a great season uh, where God is delivering many. And I had seen that a few years ago that great deliverance ministries were going to rise up. In fact, I had prophesied that uh, several years ago that there would be a, a, a new uh, supernatural prophetic bird that would specifically move in the area of deliverance. And we would see mass deliverance 
places within churches that would look similar to crusade evangelism uh, in, in, in other nations. And we're beginning to see that now. We're beginning to see that power of deliverance uh, that is going into people's genetics, into people's past, and beginning uh, to cleanse it so that they can emerge uh, as uh, people that are whole, healed, delivered, and are able to produce deliverers. I love the story of Ruth because if you study out the life and legacy of Ruth, you recognize that she comes from the lineage of Lot. But we know that Lot escaped Sodom, but he did not escape uh, the things that took place with his daughters in the mountain. And the tribe of Moab came from the loins of Lot and his daughter. These were those that fought against the things of God. They fought against the children of Israel coming into the promised land. They fought against, although they were, Lot was in the mountain, that which he produced from his tribe actually fought against what God wanted uh, to, ha to take place in the promised land by giving it to the children of God. But the Bible says that the Lord <clears throat> raised up Ruth and the Lord used Ruth, and as a result of that, she redeemed her family line, and from her loins, down the generations of her lineage, came David and eventually Jesus Christ. And so it doesn't matter what the past has uh, produced in your life. Today, God is severing that. I mean, he's giving us an opportunity for redemption. He's given us an opportunity for restoration. He's given us an opportunity for revival. And as you may have been rattled by the last several years because you were bitten, but God's calling you out of the cave. He's calling you out of the place of confinement. He's calling you out of the bird trap. And he's calling you into his presence to produce something powerful and to cause others to be accelerated and to go into the fields of harvest so that we can see a billion souls come to Jesus. My goodness, I, I want everybody to say harvest because this is harvest time. And I, I love the story of Ruth, Prophet Charlie, because Ruth and Naomi, of course, went from the leftovers with the sheaves to the bundles to the kinsman redeemer. So there's levels in the anointing or there's levels of harvest. First, she came sheepishly taking the leftovers, the little crumbs for dogs. And then she gained access with favor. Some say favor, okay? And that's, that's what this broadcast is about. There's a favor that's coming upon you from this realm. And there's a favor that's gonna upgrade you from the leftover crumbs to the bundles. And then as as Ruth, as Naomi, excuse me, began to steward her heart well before God, Ruth, excuse me, she gained favor from the bundles to now becoming married, one, and joined to the kinsman redeemer. And she had access now to the fields, from leftover to fields, leftover to fields, left, and, and that is the nobody becoming a somebody. That is resurrection. That is divine transfiguration where you're coming out of the cocoon and you become a butterfly, you become evolved. So metamorphosis evolutionized that everything about you is now different. So that is what's going on today. And in this new season, this new Hebrew year 5783, because three is the year of resurrection. This is the year of resurrection. Someone said resurrection. On the third day, Jesus rose again. On the third year, you're about to rise out of the grave. You're about to rise out of the cave. You're about to rise up out of death, out of poverty, out of the trap. Like Prophet Charles said, you're about to rise up out of the accusation and the slander of the soul generation. You're about to rise up in resurrection power. Someone said amen. So we release that favor for resurrection that you will obtain the fields in the season. No, the foxes 
are not going to destroy your fields, but you're going to guard and protect, and God is going to increase as this is a season of divine allotment. Someone say hallelujah. If you're receiving today, I want you to say amen. Give us some hearts and likes. People are going to help us to break the thousand. I believe today we can break the 1500 mark. Amen. So pray in the spirit and give us some hearts and likes. And because right now we, we are about to step into different words that God has been speaking to us. If you're enjoying this, say amen. And uh, my goodness, the power of God is flowing right now. Prophet Leon, uh, anything you, you want to wanna share before I defer back to Prophet Charlie on what is the Lord speaking in this month, in this season? Because the Lord has shown certain things. A few days ago on Thursday, I, I couldn't sleep. And I know whenever it's a new season for me, it's difficult for me to sleep. And God catches me up in visions and shows me things, right? Gives me downloads and uploads. But Prophet Leon, is there anything you want to say uh, quickly before we go into, you know, certain uh, words for this month, etc.? No, I think that's it. That's it. We can get into the, into the words, uh, Dr. Ben. Amen. Praise God. Prophet Charlie, uh, is is there anything the Lord has been showing you, speaking to you concerning this of October? Because the Lord has been speaking to me about October that we need to be prayed up. We need to get ready. Uh, of course, from October to November, the Lord says from October to November, there's a shift and a battle and a warfare coming up to Hanukkah. We understand with the midterm elections in November in the United States, and of course, that's going to affect the trajectory of uh, the nations, the world. But October, this is a month where an unusual realm has opened up, portals have opened up, and of course, the devil is wanting to release havoc and Death and destruction, spirit of death, we cancel that off in Jesus' name. Witchcraft, all that nonsense. But from October to November, the Lord said we need to pray because up to Hanukkah, the festival of lights, there's going to be a lot more shaking, a lot more exposure and shifting. Is there anything on your heart, Prophet, uh, before uh, I, I share more of what the Lord has given to me? Well, I, I would say uh, that the Lord's been speaking. Um, many things i've been trying to uh, put those things out there for for people to uh, both read and see um and i i believe that nations are hanging in the balance in this time in history right now and we have the ability through intercession to change the direction the course i i, I don't believe um that they are unchangeable i believe that we can see um, a setting back of things that the that the enemy wants to um, bring an acceleration to but we're going to have to desperately pray i know that there are nations and places that god is going to bless powerfully in this season i know that there are uh, sanctuary cities where the spirit of the lord will spare and he will protect and like prophet leon is saying uh goshens where uh, we will see with our eyes um, destruction but it will not come near us i believe that in in particular that america uh, is hanging in the balance in fact um is without a shadow of a doubt from what i've seen that the 24 election will be a hung election the nation will hang in the balance um, but the lord will tip the scales uh, if the church will pray he will tip it to uh, righteousness and there will be a turning back of this nation and i believe that god is going to raise up again in this country powerful churches uh different than the mega churches that we've seen that were seeker sensitive i believe that we will see mega churches but there will be uh those that will move in the spirit and power in the presence of God, and we'll see many come to the Lord. But this nation in particular, in the United States, is hanging in the balance. And 
God is going to uh, hang a lot and air out a lot of dirty laundry. And we're going to see that in the front lawn of the White House, the things that have been hidden uh, by this administration are going to be brought out for people to see. It will be undeniable. But because of the electoral system, this nation will hang in the balance of corruption, and there will be a hung election. And it will be a time for the church in America to rise to its feet and pray like never before uh, to tip the scales. And we, we have to begin to go before the Lord and the realm of intercession and labor until the move of the Spirit is birthed into this nation. Because if we do not, the uh, scales will be tipped and we will not uh, see the fullness of what God has for this country come to pass. Uh, and that cannot happen. We have to begin to pray. We have to begin to petition the Lord. We have to begin to stand with righteousness. We have to begin to stand for justice. We have to begin to stand for truth. We have to begin to break off the spirit of chaos. God has called America to be a forerunning nation. We are a nation of pioneers. We are a nation of uh, prophetic people. We are a nation uh, and, and, and I, you know, I know there are many people that are watching from around the world, so I, I don't want to upset anyone, but America is a, a visionary nation. As America goes, so goes the world. And as the church goes in America, so will the other nations follow. That's why God's going to raise up powerful men of God and women of God in this country that are going to give profess, fresh perspective and good and and clear cut vision about what God is saying. It will not be some kind of a watered down word. It will be very direct. It will be very specific, and everybody will know who's hearing God and who's not. It is not a time uh, to uh, water down or try uh, to be uh, general. This is a very this is a time where God is looking for specifics from men of God to step out and begin to prophesy what God is saying. This nation will hang in the balance, but I believe that as the church prays, the scales will be tipped and we'll begin to see justice and turn around again. Things that have been hidden will be revealed. Things that have been unjust will be brought to justice. Though Those that have prayed upon the nations of the earth in this country will be brought to justice. The hunter will become the hunted and God will begin to bring his power back in to this country again. And from the white house to the church house, we are going to see revival, but we have to uh, not worry about, and I want to speak specifically to people that are watching today you cannot be intimidated fearful or afraid about what others will say we cannot be intimidated or scale back the word of the lord because we're somehow afraid of what of what others uh, may may think of us we have to believe, decree, and declare the word of the Lord, stand upon it, and move forward. And the word of the Lord will not fall to the ground, but it's going to produce. And there are things that have taken place in this, in this nation in particular that God is going to bring justice to. And, you know, when, when the Lord talked to me, and I hope I'm all right, Pastor Ben, I, I'm just kind of sharing today, uh, but I, I had a lot of criticism from people that, uh, you know, spoke about how 
you know, I, I, I said that this administration that was uh, pretending to run the country would uh, be, be uh, crippled and confused. And, and, you know, I had people saying to me, you, you need to pray for the president and <clears throat> all, all this. And we pray for, pray for our leaders. But when you're a man of God and you know what the truth is, and the truth is coming out even more and more every single day, then you have an obligation to speak the truth to the people of God and tell them that a election that was stolen that was manipulated uh will be exposed and if you're sitting in a stolen seat then you are most definitely going to have an administration that is crippled and confused and we've seen that from biden in fact i said that he would fall and i and and we've seen in the natural several falls but i am telling you there is one that is greater that is coming and it will be undeniable what god is saying to the nation of america and when that happens there will also be an economic shaking in the nation of china that will have to do primarily with their real estate and god will bring alignment as he pushes back listen to me as he pushes back the bear out of the nation of ukraine and brings back the harvest because the nation of Ukraine is the breadbasket of the earth. And the bear has attempted to steal the harvest. And God says that he shall be pushed back and there shall be a stone that is released that shall strike the forehead of Vladimir Putin and push the bear out of the nation of ukraine as a sign of what god is doing in the earth that he is giving back the field to ruth and naomi he is giving the field the harvest back to the nations and we're going to see the harvest that was promised come in at the same time china will be pushed back the dragon will be pushed mm. back for they they would say that there there is a, a a dawning of a new day a day of the dragon but the lord says that this shall be a dawning of the roar of the lion yeah come on for there's a new alliance that's coming between Europe, the UK, and America that will push back both the bear as well as the dragon from taking the South China Sea and coming into the nation of Taiwan. I say the nation of Taiwan because the Lord recognizes Taiwan as an independent nation, while the UN does not recognize Taiwan, God recognizes that island as a sovereign nation. He sees it as a diamond in the South China Sea. He sees it as those that have reached out their hand to the nation of Israel. And the Lord says that the dragon cannot touch Taiwan because of its connection with the nation of Israel. Israel is forever. Israel shall stand. And even those nations that are attempting to come across and take out Israel, the Lord says that he shall lift up a standard an overshadowing of Psalm 91, a ring of the spirit will blockade every bomb, every single uh, attack, even coming in from Palestine. 
So those are some of just a few things that I'm seeing, uh, Pastor Ben, that I believe are significant in the coming days. I know that we need to watch the nation of Brazil and there's great turmoil that's coming there as their nation is hanging in the balance as well. Uh, but God is raising up those that will walk in righteousness. We may not like their words. We may think they're harsh, but we need to recognize lions when they're roaring. And this is a time where the lion is going to roar. And the enemies of the cross are going to run in fear in Jesus' name. My goodness, Prophet Charlie, that was powerful. Uh, I mean, literally, Prophet Charlie, he just went into the glory realm and he prophesied the word of the Lord from the courts of heaven. All right. And I'm sure many of you are, are experiencing that that realm. But Prophet Charlie just declared the word as a prophet, as a man of God. So it's coming to pass. It's already done in the spirit. But the natural manifestation, though it's delayed, it shall not be tarried any longer. And that's why prophets, you, yes, you, prophets, prophetic people, intercessors, that's why the true church is needed right now. Because as prophets, as prophetic people, we bring preservation. We bring purity, protection, and preservation. We bring the fear of the Lord. We bring a realm of protection. Uh, in the regions and the cities and the places that we are, even as Abraham began to barter with God. Oh, if there's 50 righteous people, 10, 20, uh, will you condemn this region? And so God is raising up men and women of God who will speak to the storm, like Elijah, the prophet, to speak and say, it will not rain for three years. And after three years, the hand of God will show up. So we need men and women of God to speak to the hurricane, speak to the earthquake, speak to the corruption. Speak to the Ahabs and the Jezebel. Speak out and call out because prophets, prophetic people, you, we are salt and light. We bring preservation. We bring protection, the fear of God in a region. So I'm saying amen. And that's why certain regions are not going down. That's why airplanes are not going down. It's because you're in the airplane. It's because you're in the car. Because you are a man, woman of God that's carrying the glory of God with the hosts of heaven. Can I get a hallelujah? And, uh, I, I want to share a word quickly, but Prophet Leon, I know you're writing notes. Anything you want to say, man of God, just as Prophet Charlie was just ministering right now. No, you can go ahead. You can go ahead first, Dr. Ben. That's fine. You know, thank you so much, Prophet. You know, I saw Thursday night, I was trying to sleep, and I like my sleep because I, I got a lot of things to do, right? I'm, I'm, a, I'm a man with a lot on my plate, right? Uh, literally and metaphorically. But, uh, but I couldn't sleep Thursday night because I knew it was a changing of a season. As we're in the 10 days of all. And especially with the hurricanes, Hurricane Fiona, Hurricane Ian, and praise God, it went from category five to category one. Amen. And that's what the power of prayer does. Praise God. But as I was trying to sleep, the Lord took me in a vision and he showed me a vision of an octopus. All right. He showed me a vision of an octopus coming out of the waters. And the Lord said, deep calls out into deep. This is a season, October is a season, is a month of the deep things of God being revealed and exposed. And then he showed me an octopus coming out of the ocean in that Florida, the Caribbean, in, in that ocean, in that, whoo, in that region, right, of those waters. And he showed me an octopus coming out. And I began to do some research on what does an octopus stand for? Well, biblically, an octopus was an unclean animal. It's an animal that uh, you do not eat, okay? The, the Jewish people, it's unkosher. It's not kosher. It's not clean. So it's, it's an unclean animal, but an octopus also stands for greed, seduction, avoidance, and camouflage. Because the octopus avoids. The octopus is camouflaged. It's hidden. The octopus is, is, is a marine spirit, of course. It is a water marine spirit. It's a Leviathan marine spirit. But the Lord showed me an octopus of control and greed and seduction coming out of the waters. And the Lord said that this octopus spirit is going to be exposed and exterminated this month. Now, I want you to hear this because I believe even as a sign, there is going to be an unusual sea creature that's going to be found in the next two months. In the Florida, ooh, I feel, I feel the power from Florida to the Caribbean area. And I remember I released a very similar word in Hawaii 
maybe three years ago. And I began to prophesy, and I began to prophesy that there was going to be a deep thing coming out. And there was some weird, unusual blob fish creature that came out that has never been seen before on the shores of Hawaii about one or two weeks later. So I believe there's going to be some weird octopus marine leviathan thing coming out, manifesting. It's going to be exterminated and destroyed because we understand that a lot of these hurricanes, storms, is actually demonic. Okay, It's not God. It's demonic. It, it is an attack of the enemy. It is and it's because the devil hates Florida. I'll tell you, the devil hates Florida, okay? Florida is a freedom state. Florida is a state of revival in the United States. Amen. But the enemy has conjured up some witchcraft and, of course, the machines, all right, these machines of the globalist leftist agendas that are controlling weather, okay? But we understand the weather gods, Baal, Malek, Ashtaroth, they're done. They're finished. And you and I, we as the church at Ecclesia, we have authority over climate, over climate change, over weather, because you are an atmosphere. Amen. So that's something I saw. And I believe God is bringing deliverance to the church from the octopus spirit. God is bringing deliverance and freedom from this spirit of greed, seduction, control, manipulation. He's bringing exposure to that in Jesus' name. And another thing I want to talk about right now is because... In this month of October, we understand, of course, there's Halloween, which is a counterfeit. And we also understand that there's uh, some of the big Islamic, Hindu, and Buddhist festivals this month of October, okay? But it's a counterfeit of the 10 days of all. It's a counterfeit of the biblical appointments of God, the biblical feast. If you're following me, say amen. The Lord said this month of October... There is an unusual realm, unusual portals that have opened up for what? I feel the Holy Ghost. Listen, you need to hear me, people of God. This month, there's going to be unusual things happening, okay? Unusual things happening. What does that mean? The enemy is going to try to attack you, is going to try to come at you, car accidents, health, just unusual things. And I've been hearing reports the last week, different car accidents friends in the ministry, people of God, but God's going to release protection over you. Amen. In midst of this unusual swirl of seances, witchcraft, and all this evil, demonic, leftist stuff. But in midst of that, in this month of October, there's going to be an unusual realm of breakthrough and victory where I believe many witches are going to repent and come to Jesus. I believe the fear and the terror of God is going to fall upon many people in this month and many are going to get saved many are going to get delivered and there's going to be a shutting down of halloween movies witchcraft movies which is world there's going to be a shutting down some say shut it down lord there's going to be a shutting down even this month in the month of october some say amen and one more thing i want to say is right now even as prophet charlie and prophet leon shared it this is all this is all in alignment but this month it's the month of tabernacles. All right. In one week, we're stepping into tabernacles, which means we're tabernacling with God. So there's a new covering, like Prophet Leon said, a new turban. There's a new mantle. There's a new mantle of prayer and intercession that's falling on the body to prepare us, to launch us, to birth us from the month of October to November to Hanukkah. Okay. And then from Hanukkah, which is December, Hanukkah up to Purim, which is in February, all right? And then Purim to Pentecost. So right now we are in a season of tabernacles where God is hiding us, bringing us into the shadow, the hidden place, the hiding of his wings, because he's getting us ready for the public revelation and the public manifestation for the next season in Jesus' name. Prophet Charlie, is there something you want to say quickly? And we'll go over to Prophet Leon because I, I feel the bubbling coming forth. Yeah, you know, I just find it interesting, um, again, that Prophet Leon was, was touched on um, Joshua giving a new turban. And, of course, we know that in that chapter in Zechariah, the Lord also speaks of a white stone, which the white stone was given as an acquittal to those that were found innocent in the courts of the Lord. Hmm. And... Uh, when you study out the book of Revelation, you look at chapter 2, verses 12 through 17, 
one of the things you're going to discover is both the spirit of Balaam operating with the spirit of the Nicolaeans, which is the spirit of witchcraft that works alongside the spirit of religion. But, and they function from the seat of Satan. In other words, it's a false uh, seat of authority. And the word of the Lord declared in Rome in Revelation chapter two, that the Lord would give a, uh, a spirit uh, to those that would overcome. And as they ate of the manna, the Lord would also give them a stone with a new name written on it. I believe that the Lord is giving fresh revelation today through this broadcast, as well as through uh, those that are watching during their private prayer time. He's going to begin to give you fresh manna that is going to break off uh, the lies of the enemy that have been working through religion and witchcraft to uh, try to stop you from pressing in to what God has for you. And that spirit of accusation works with the seat of Satan and tries to bring uh, a martyrdom upon Antipas, which Antipas was a faithful witness of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we know that Jesus Christ, the spirit of prophecy, is to prophesy the word of the Lord. And Antipas was one of those uh, that declared the word of God, but became a faithful martyr. But he was given a stone, a white stone, that was an acquittal from those that were speaking ill of him. I believe again, I'm that God is going to break the witch's trap. He's going to snap uh, the staff of the wicked, and he is going to open up those traps that have been set for God's prophetic people, and they're going to fly free in the season. And the Lord is going to give manna, and he is going to give the white stone. You know, I just want to say one other thing, Pastor Ben, uh, as we've been seeking the Lord, uh, really, for the past 15 weeks here, uh, every morning, just no music, no uh, microphones, just raw intercession, people coming together. It's been very powerful. Uh, one of the things that I discovered on our land here in Moravian Falls as I was uh, walking into the woods is, the, is we have a, a large white stone. And the Lord spoke to me and said that uh, there is an acquittal that's coming. There is a, a justice that is being given. And I'm handing to my sons and my daughters the white stone, which represents purity, represents a new name, and represents uh, where the false accusations have gone forward. He says, I'm bringing justice. And of course, there's been heavy angelic activity all over our property. Uh, but I had no idea that we had this large, massive white stone on the property because it's very far out into the woods. But I believe it's a prophetic sign for what God's going to do for his prophetic people in this season, that he's going to hand us uh, a white stone. And uh, very, very powerful time. Very powerful time. I remember when Jane Hammond handed me a white stone several years ago. Uh, at a conference that I did there with uh, Bishop Hammond and the and those uh, that uh, the prophetic council that they did, and I believe that the Lord is going to hand a white stone to many in this season, and where there's been false accusation, where there has been uh, people slandering your name, that God is going to bring justice and judgment. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you, we we have to be very careful when dealing with men and women of God. Uh, first Samuel, is it okay? I'm going, is that okay? Are we, are we good? Okay, I don't wanna, you know, step on any, any, any toes or anything. I guess I probably already do, but. Uh, we all do, Prophet, you're in good First Samuel, um, chapter, uh, well, second Samuel chapter one, verse 21. This is something that was highlighted to me. Uh, it says, in the mountains of Geboa, let there be no dew, neither let there be rain upon you, nor the fields of offerings. For there the shield of the mighty 
is valiantly cast away the shield of Saul as though he had not been anointed with oil. Let me say this to you. Never touch God anointed. Even if you even if you be familiar with them, even if you believe that they are 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 uh you know have lost their anointed, their their anointing upon their life. The Bible says that when you touch God's anointed, you will be as a mountain that receives no rain, that you will receive no dew, you will you will receive no offering because you you thought in yourself that Saul was as one that had not been anointed. I believe we got to we 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 have to uh, have a healthy spirit of the fear of the Lord when it comes to primarily dealing with people that have been anointed by God. You may not like their delivery, you may not understand their message, but you must be very careful in dealing with them because God does not take it lightly when someone touches someone that he has anointed with oil at one time, the oil still flows upon those. And the Bible says that they were both, uh, uh, Jonathan as well as Saul were swift like eagles, even to the place where they died. You know, we've, we've seen men of God that have, that have, that have left the earth and we need to be very careful. I feel the spirit of God on this right now. So very careful on how we deal with those men of God. We have to be very careful on what we speak about them. Because uh, we could find ourselves in a place uh, where we are on the wrong side when it comes to the way that God ju <clears throat> judges and views things in his courts and we could end we could end up fighting against god and the judgment come upon us the very words that we're speaking would fall back upon ourselves i, I believe that's a warning and you 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 look at a uh, saul's shield and say well there's no oil upon it well you never know what has been what is left at the end of a man's life so we need to be very careful. My, my good prophet, you, you're right in the vein. And we're going to jump over to Prophet Leon. But Prophet Charlie, how are you doing on time right now? Are you so good, man of God? I'm good. I, I can go for just a little bit longer, and then I, ha I have to uh, go pick my daughter up from school. Absolutely. And it's such a pleasure and honor to have you. And uh, I, I want to jump over to Prophet Leon in a second. But uh, <clears throat> before you leave, Prophet Charlie, I, I want us to pray, all right? And we're going to pray in a few minutes. But... You are about to receive the white stone of acquittal. And literally, the white stone becomes white through the pressing, through the fire, through the purging, through the furnace of affliction. So you are about to receive the white stone of acquittal. And even that stone is a stone that, that knocked out the forehead of, of Goliath. So I believe right now that is a word for many of you. As Prophet Charlie said, you are about to receive the white stone. If you receive that by faith, I want you to say, I receive it in Jesus' name, amen, because that is being released to the church. It's been burnished like bronze. It's been burnished in the fire, the furnace of affliction. And your name, the new name is written on it. That's so powerful. Prophet Leon, what are your thoughts, my friend? Man, I got to talk to us, Prophet. No, you know, I'm just going to share something short. I, uh, um, I think what Prophet Jolia shared is, is so powerful. It really carries the heart of God. You know, it really stood out big uh, when you just said, Prophet Jolly, about um, honoring men and women. And I believe this is a strange season that we're going in where God is going to, God is putting a highlight and an emphasis on that thing and the scripture that many hate, touch not his anointed and do his prophets no harm, you know. But uh, uh, there's something that God takes a very, uh, close to his heart, you know, when you have the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, they are extension gifts of Christ, meaning they are part of Christ in the earth. When we look at an apostle, when we look at a prophet, when we look at an evangelist, a pastor, a teacher, uh, who is supposed to be governing the local church, um, well, it's actually only supposed to be apostles and prophets, but, uh, you know, we are literally looking at a body part of Christ. So when we, you know, the scripture said that uh, in the book of Corinthians, that many have 
have fallen asleep and even died because they have not rightly discerned the body of Christ. Now, a lot of times people would misinterpret the scripture and they would think that we have to discern the body of Christ on the cross. No, it is to rightly discern the graces and the measures, the ranks in the body. And because they have not rightly discerned it, many of them have fallen asleep. Many of them have died. Uh, many of them have uh, taken communion, not rightly discerning the graces, recognizing ranks and measures. And uh, God has definitely put graces, uh, graces, ranks, measures into the earth, which comes by virtue of revelation. So, and the Lord shared with me that uh, and I'm just going to share something short, three minutes, uh, Dr. Ben, really just a, like I said, uh, Prophet Charlie shared so much, but the Lord said to me, many mantles that were stolen he is going to be released. You know, uh, there were stolen mantles and they are those that have the key of knowledge and they are keeping doors shut um, for many not to enter into. Uh, and they themselves have not entered into it. They are experts of the law, but they have themselves the key of knowledge. They have not entered into it. And so they have dimensions closed and they are those who are gated keepers and readers, that is really going to give an account to the Lord because they're keeping dimensions closed for many to rise up. But in the same way, young people, when I say young ones, those who are rising up and who's becoming a voice have really put honor on their heart and they've honored men and women of God and they, and through that honor, they were abused. And there are those that are watching now and the Lord says that do not lose heart, do not lose your honor, as Prophet Charlie was saying, even as David's touched the mantle. Many of you touched the mantle of soul. You cut off the corner, you know, and uh, you, uh, you know, you backed off. And uh, uh, that is why David and Jonathan were able to go swiftly up until the end of their lives. You know, uh, David understood that role of honor. Even when Saul died, he sang the song and said, oh, how the mighty have fallen. Uh, meaning he honored him even after after his death. Uh, you know, the anointing never dies. The, the, we see that that Elijah passed on the mantle to Elisha. Elisha didn't pass on the mantle, but the anointing was alive in his grave and in his bones. And then we see how John the Baptist picked up that mantle. You know, that was actually originally in Elisha's grave and it comes from Elijah. And when they looked at John the Baptist, when the people pointed at John the Baptist, they said these words, they said, the spirit and power of Elijah is resting upon him. But they had no reference point of Elijah. When those people were looking at him, they had no picture, they had no reference point of how Elijah looked, of how he behaved, how his function was. Yet they could see the spirit of Elijah operating upon him, uh, which means it was such a clear, when they looked at John, they literally were looking at Elijah. I believe that there was a clothing, a mantle, a, a glorious body of Elijah coming upon John. And uh, these are the spiritual realities that's coming awakening, uh, it's being awakened and coming alive today that people have to understand honor. They have to understand how the anointing operates. The anointing doesn't die. When we speak against an anointed man of God, the person is dying. But the anointing that has been shaped, you know, a mantle is shaped through experience and years of experience. And when that person goes to heaven, that mantle doesn't go, but that years of experience that they've been shaped, for example, Elijah comes upon another person and God decides to use a system of a man. When we say that uh, you cannot encounter God without thinking story, uh, uh, Jacob, when Jacob wrestled with God, why? Because Jacob, Jacob in that moment when he wrestled with God, he created a system. Uh, we cannot embrace healing or we cannot fully function the gift of healing without embracing Ben Hinn and Catherine Kuhlman. Uh, Pastor Benny Hinn, as many people don't, might disagree with them, you won't tap into healing. You will never tap into evangelism fully unless you honor Ronald Bonke, uh, Billy Graham. So there's men that literally became systems through their mantles because, and God chose to put them as honor systems in the earth that unless people honor them, they will never tap into dimensions that God has orchestrated for them. Fasting and prayer and isol separation will not take you into dimensions unless you decide to have certain systems and mantles. You know, so the Lord said to me that many are hurt that is watching right now. They've been hurt by the church. Uh, their hearts were right in the right place, but they need to get back to the local church. And the season that we're going in the relationship with God is so crucial because God is calling for accounts. You know, there's a day that is calling for accounts in a season that we're into and he's going to deal lots like you said uh dr ben is going to deal lots and some is going to get a negative some is going to get a positive people must be very careful on how they tread with the fear of the lord 
and with the spirit of fear that is going to try to hold many. You know, and the spirit of fear will simply come when you open your eyes to the news, to the crash of the economy, to what is going on in the nations, because there's a threat of war that is lurking beneath. And this threat of war is going to put a fear in a lot of people that crash the seemingly crash of the housing market. I'm saying that prophetically, the seemingly crash of the housing market is putting a fear upon many items. It's not going to be as it seemed. Uh, the Lord is very close to the United States. It's going to be done without the United States and Israel. You know, there's a there's a, a, there's a pushing towards a threat of uh, shifting of a superpower towards China, but the Lord is not going to allow it to happen. And we have a lot of people watching from China. And when I was prophesying the one day, somebody got so offended, they left my ministry because they said I prophesied against China. Stop being carnal. You know, we're living in this spiritual. We are, we are not in China. We're not in the United States. We're not in South Africa. We're in this kingdom and a city called Zion, a kingdom called the kingdom of God. It's neither black nor white, male nor female. So we've been translated into another kingdom. Uh, when we speak, there is, uh, I know South Africa is connected to China. Uh, you know, so we're, we're in the same boat. But uh, the Lord said to me that China and uh and um, and uh, Britain is fighting over Australia that, uh, you know, the church in Australia has to pray dearly because there's really a dark cloud covering the nation of Australia. Yet God has profound gifts that is in caves, that is hidden, that are very hurt. Many gifts that has been very rejected by the church that Jezebel came against and has wounds upon those gifts and they are hiding. They don't want up their heads out because they're afraid of being cut again and you see this this threat of britain of britain and china over the nation of australia the lord also said to me that it's raising up a lot of young ministers that will be eunuchs and jehus that's going to overthrow jezebel and overthrowing this anoint this this false anointing of Je jezebel that is coming up but the lord is very close to united states and israel so we have to watch close united states and Israel. And everything that is happening to israel is happening to the united states in fact in the next two three months we'll see great signs in the sky that is going to be indicating to a change of season that's going to be indicating to to god's movement uh and it is going to be in relation to the nation of israel i also saw that 2024 and 2025 will be a threat of huge uh, black event a catastrophic event in 2024 2025 um you know but these are just markers of where the church is going and as prophet charlie was saying as the church unites in intercessory prayer and embrace the gifts of the prophets because the prophet preserves the prophet protects a prophet is a gift i said this prophet spirit is boundless isn't it amazing how people will not dream of an evangelist in their dream they will not dream about teachers. They'll dream about prophets. You know, you can have a prophet in a in a church. That poor pastor in that church, nobody has ever dreamed of him. But a prophet visits that church, and everybody dreams about the prophet because the spirit of a prophet is limitless, and 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 the boundaries just it's it's it's. I think that's why the spirit of Elijah will come back. That's why Moses and Elijah was on the mountain. But the Lord said to me that people have to be very close to God. In this time that is coming, you know, there's a lot of fanfare. There's a lot of new age. We'll see a lot of celebrities being saved under a false God, which is not God. And we have to serve the God that is in Christ. Colossians chapter number two. If we don't serve a God that is in Christ, uh, we're serving the wrong God. And people are location. I preached this Sunday. We are a location. We're not a person. We are a location. Um, uh, Christ is a location. We are in Christ. We are a location. And uh, we have to increase the capacity of our location. You know, uh, 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 when Peter walking, his shadow fell upon people and they got healed. The Garden of Eden was a location. In fact, there were two gardens. You have the Garden of God. You have the Garden of Eden. Um, you know, but that was the location that God used to visit the earth from the Garden of God to the Garden of Eden. But now he's chosen man to be his location. Uh, so, you know, people have to really see what they allow into their locations, what they don't. But this new age spirit uh, that has been that has been infiltrating the church in the United States big time is also coming into South Africa. And it is so aligned with Christianity that it's going to deceive and seduce many. It has already deceived and seduced many. They'll speak about God consciousness, Christ consciousness. I've got in my life, you know, and then they begin to move into spiritual dynamics that is outside of Christ, tapping into supernatural power that is outside of the designed order, creeping in another way into the sheepfold outside of the door. So um, these are things that the Spirit of the Lord warned me about. I mean, we spoke about it last time, Dr. Ben, but that I just have for people. You, you know, Prophet Leon, the, this broadcast has been so rich and so powerful. It's like, it's almost been two hours already, and we haven't even scratched the surface because deep 
calls out into deep, right? And the Bible says that the glory of a king knows how to draw things out. And so things are being drawn out. And, and Prophet Leon, you're, you're just sharing so much. You're, you're rapping right now, the Holy Ghost, you know? You're just fire right now. But I know Prophet Charlie, you, you have to get going. But uh, Prophet Charlie, uh, Prophet Leon, let's stretch out our hands. And Prophet Charlie, can you just release a prayer and a blessing before you leave? And me and Prophet Leon will continue. But go ahead, man of God. So, Father, I just thank you for um, what you're doing in the earth. I thank you for every one of these prophetic words that have gone forth during this time. Your uh, confirmation to your people. And, Father, I thank you that uh, the seed of the supernatural, the seed of the prophetic is going deep in the soils of people's hearts. Lord, I thank you that you're raising up a generation that carries the legacy of the glory of God in the earth. Father, I thank you that your spirit, yeah, your power is being produced through each and every one that is underneath the sound of our voice today. Father, I thank you for miracles. We thank you for a supernatural impartation of the prophetic as well as the apostolic. Lord, I thank you for divine alignment for many believers in the body of Christ that feel homeless and hopeless. And Lord, I thank you that you begin to bring them in. You begin to bring them into those companies, into those uh, positions, those places where the prophetic, the apostolic is celebrated. And Lord, I thank you that you're raising up a new generation, a new breed that is uh, going to celebrate the supernatural, is going to uh, move into greater depths of revelation and in, in realms of the glory of God. Father, I thank you uh, for an impartation, and I'm just seeing this now. But Lord, I thank you for an impartation of Ezekiel 44.4. That, Father, that in this season, you would fill houses. You would fill uh, church gatherings. And we would fall upon our faces. That for those that are prophetic, those that have uh, stood uh, in, in opposition against the spirit of, war, of the world and faced persecution. God, I am grateful for persecution Hallelujah. because it produces greater depths of the realms of glory. And so, Lord, I thank you that as there have been, uh, uh, we've been in a season of persecution, that the, there's a greater weight of glory that is coming upon us. Lord, I thank you uh, for the revealing of Ezekiel 44, 4, that you would come into the house and we would fall upon our face because of the glory of the Lord. I thank you for the wind of the spirit. I thank you for the move of the Holy Ghost flowing uh, into nations, into ministries uh, that, are, uh, that are with you completely that are yielding to you. We may not have every, everything uh, sorted perfectly out, but Father, I thank you that the power of the Holy Ghost is going to follow, follow us and demonstrations of the glory of God are going to be seen. And Father, I thank you that you're going to use uh, those that are underneath the sound of my voice to produce powerful apostolic moves in the nations of the earth. And God, I give you glory and praise and honor for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow. Amen. 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 You know, I want everybody to give the Lord a clap. You know, as you were praying, Prophet Charlie, I was reminded one of my favorite prophets, Prophet Kim Clement, who's a South African. You know, it was his anniversary of, of homecoming just a few days ago. And uh, again, there is a release of, of the mantles of the prophetic. And there really was nobody like Prophet Kim. But I love and appreciate you. Uh, Prophet Charlie, everybody, let's give it up for the man of God, Prophet Charlie Shant, for just pouring out. Were you blessed by his ministry? We love you, Prophet, and we can't wait to do this again. Amen. Better convert us. God bless you, Prophet. God bless you guys. Everybody, give it up for the man of God, Prophet Charlie Shant. My goodness.
I mean, the Shem family. We love is one of my brand. We love Prophet Jesse. We love Prophetess Amy. Uh, we just love the Shams. Amen. And, and myself and Prophet Leon, we want to pray for you for a little bit more. But if you were blessed today, I want you to say amen. There was so much that we touched on today, Prophet. Come on. Yeah. So much. I, I feel like as important and divine as all of our convergences have been, Prophet Leon, I feel like today's was, was I don't know, I, I, I feel like today's was a capsicum or today's was, was a whole nother level. You know, I think just, again, it's more powerful when the different prophetic anointings and graces are together. Amen. Yeah. Wow, my goodness. Pro uh, I, I, I want to go into the Prophet Leon. Uh, any any last thoughts uh, just before I shift here? And again, we want to pray for people of God. So if you receive and if you want to receive prayer, I want to say amen. Pray for me. Praise God. Because there was just so much that was done and released. And I can't wait for our next prophetic convergence. Obviously, Prophet Leon, the Lord is raising up a prophetic convergence between myself, yourself, but it's bigger than us. It really is prophets in the nations. It really is prophets in the nations. And I just want to say hello to uh, Prophet Daniel McCormick. I love you, my friend. Patricia Go, our friend from Australia. God bless you. Prophet Ivana, Pastor Sharon. Amen. Uh, Cheryl Cummings, God bless you. Melissa Filler. But um, Prophet Leon, any last thoughts before uh, before we just shift right now? I, uh, Dr. Ben, there was so much said, and you know, I, I believe when we pray for people, we must just pray for them for, I, I think that, you know, for them to be kept, you know, the Bible says that, uh, that um, he, he keeps us in his hand and no man will snatch us from his hand. And, and uh, when Jesus prayed the prayer that you will keep them uh, from this world, you know, uh, uh, that we, from the enemy, and uh, that we need to pray for people to be kept. I, I think a lot of people just want instant breakthrough and so on, but, uh, you know, when we look at the reality of situations, uh, God is busy, um, God is busy uh, stretching the capacity of people's spirits so that they can carry the glory that is coming, uh, you know, so when we go through tough times, we want to cry out to God to bring us out of it, but we have to go through it uh, by the Spirit of God being protected, being in a Goshen. And, uh, you know, so I also believe that, you know, with the shifting of this season, uh, also we're in a season, unfortunately, of great men of, and women of God that are being taken. It's also great exposure that is taking place, more exposure that is coming. Uh, uh, but, you know, that, um, uh, that people will be ready and positioned correctly to receive mantles. And the mantles for their lives there is still a casting of mantles you know there's a lot of false doctrine that is going around and deceptive doctrine that tells people there's no longer mantles and this and that and it's a very subtle deceptive doctrine because it sounds interesting but uh it all shifts you to no longer pay the price to no longer be right and correctly aligned you know uh, uh and i always have a saying just stick with the foundational things that we've been taught a lot of people want to get into funny fans of grace and we understand i understand the power of grace i preach grace like no one's business but i also understand paying the price for the anointing i will never um i will never uh, substitute that for anything else you know and a lot of people come in and say there's no long mantles in the new testament and so on no uh, we need to understand old testament new testament the Old Testament is a shadow and a type of things to come. So we don't do away with mantles. No, that was just a shadow and a type of things to come. But mantles are still falling. We see the mantle on Eli on, on, on from Elisha and uh, many other examples. But uh, it's, you know, that there are mantles falling. There's anointings falling. You cannot, you cannot, you cannot uh, negate or deny the passing on of mantles. If you look at Pastor Benny, I know he's your, he's your pastor and, you know how he received the ministry from Catherine Kuhlman and we see I think it was Ronald Bonke I think he was receiving it from George I'm not exactly sure but you see uh, mantles coming through you see Smith Wigglesworth getting it from uh, you know uh, was it uh, 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 no no I forgot but uh, anyway you will see these 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 man it was Lester Somro wasn't it or Lester Somro getting it from Smith Wigglesworth, sorry, and you would see, uh, you would see these, these, um, these uh, 
Chelsea. You see TL Osborne again going falling onto the next one. But you see each ministry that made a major impact in the earth today received importation and a mantle that is undeniable, you know, from that we cannot deny it. Importation, Paul, I pray to my God that I, I have longed to see you, that I may import some spiritual gift. So I really believe we have to pray for people to be covered, for mantles to be released, for their hearts to be protected. Like Prophet Charlie said, the poison of a snake, you know, those that have been receiving snake bites and when poison is in your spirit, in your spirit, I was preaching a message. When we are unclean, when you were unclean in the Old Testament, you touched something you were not allowed to touch or not supposed to be touching, or you were poisoned by bitterness, you could not minister as a priest. You have to be on sit down until a time of cleansing. Same in today, when you minister, a lot of ministers have been bitten by the poison uh, of a snake. And, uh, you know, the, whether they've taken offense or so, but there's bitterness that, and what it does is it poisons your spirit. And uh, you need healing from those things. And I think we really need just to touch that on when we, when we pray for people here. My goodness. Well, it, it absolutely is a time of deliverance, healing, freedom, breakthrough. Because there's too much at stake, Prophet. There's too much that God has in store for the church, for the body of Christ. And again, we as prophets, as prophetic voices, we help lead you to the water. But only you can make the choice, the decision to have full surrender full repentance deep conviction of sin or deep conviction of of release only you can make the decision to drink the waters yourself so my prophet leon we want to pray over you right now praise god we want to pray over you for freedom and for deliverance there was so much that was released today but i really sense again what what you shared prophet leon and what prophet charlie shared about the white stone there's a white stone of acquittal as there's accusation attacks, the adversary has been against the body of Christ. The little horn has been waging, has been lying against the Lord and against his church. The finger of God will be released. Many, many to kill a parson, the writings on the wall, the finger of judgment, the finger of justice. And as we're about to cross over, the Father is going to release recompense deliverance and breakthrough like never before amen so i want everybody just lift up your hands right now lord we thank you for healing for deliverance and for recompense right now the father of glory is exposing and he's delivering and he's showing things in your life right now come on i want everyone to pray in the host right now yes, give us some hearts and likes right now there it is again i'm low ta ta I say for angels of deliverance, we declare Psalm 91 that you will be protected, you will be covered by the blood, that no pestilence, no plague, no attack of the enemy will come near you. The tabernacling of the glory of God will cover you, will protect you, and in this season, you shall see the power and the glory of God like never before. Someone say glory. Someone say glory. There's a glory that's coming upon you in the name of Jesus. It a broke a angels. Coverings, tabernacles are coming over you in Jesus' name. So much shout hallelujah. Now, people of God, in this moment right now, as myself and Prophet Leon, we're going to pray for you in a, just a little bit more. But in this moment, we have about 100 people that are watching. I'm going to open up a time for you to sow into this moment of glory. Someone say amen. We're going to give you an opportunity to sow into this prophetic anointing. Did you receive today? Were you blessed? Were you blessed for Prophet Charlie, Prophet Leon? I mean, I'm telling you, do you know how difficult it is to get three busy men of God together to do something like this? Do you know how, how difficult it is? I mean, we've been working on this for a few months, okay? But <laughs> there's going to be more prophetic convergence. There's going to be more because it's my heart. It's Prophet Leon's heart, Prophet Charlie's heart. It's our heart to raise up a, a true genuine prophetic convergence but in this moment we want to give you the opportunity to sow we want to give you opportunity to bless to honor the servants of god the prophets of god were you blessed by prophet leon are you blessed by prophet charlie i mean listen myself probably and we're still here come on somebody we're still here after two hours and it's our honor and our privilege to give to you to release to you the rhema word of the Lord. Someone say amen. So I want to encourage all of you to give back to the servants of God. Give back to the servants of God. Amen. And uh, we're going to post and pin the ways to give. Miss Dolores, come on. 
We're going to post and pin the ways to give right now. So I want you, if you make a pledge to sow, to give, I want you to comment covering, okay? Because God is releasing a new covering in midst of these times. Amen. Thank you. I want you to comment covering. Amen. And as you comment and make that pledge, your name comes up. Myself and Prophet Leon will come in agreement with you in Jesus' name. Amen. But give generously, so generously, because this is Yom Kippur season. This is the 10 days of all season. This is the time where judgment, justice is being released from the throne of God. Amen. And we're going to pin it in the comments as well. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. That's right. Uh, Simona Foleta, God bless you. Catholic, God bless you. Lenel, God bless you. Jennifer Nell, God bless you. Amen. Comment Amen. covering as you sow. Thank you so much. Olga, God bless you. Glory be to God. Sue Sanchez, God bless you. Come on, we, we release a covering of the power of God, a covering of the spirit of the Lord, spirit of the deliverance, One. the angel of deliverance. Glory be to God. Kerry Perez, God bless you. Dominga, God bless you. Gay Joan, God bless you. E, uh, Elise, God bless you. Christine, Talia, God bless you. Felipe, God bless you. Come on. That's right. Come on. Every yes. single day. Yes. The numbers just drop, but we know that the 700 watch right now is dropping. But we know that those people who are truly receive and believe in honor, I'm telling you, this is a miracle seed. This moment will change your life right now. Rosa, Danny, hallelujah, Candace. Yes, Mumu, Sophia, Janet, Karen Edwards, Samali. Praise God, Prophet. Yeah, I, know, yeah, I see. I see. Um, uh, 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 the people on your side, Danny, Whitney. Thank you so much. And then on on our side, uh, covering Aliyah. Thank you so much, Keshika, uh, Elsie. Thank, thank you, thank you. Um, I see people all over saying covering, covering, covering. Gloria, Deb, Krushke. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You know, don't uh, don't uh, eat and run tonight. Just uh, give a blessing and donate it. You know, we, uh, like I said, we're trying to or endeavoring to bring a prophetic convergence. There has been, a, 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 and uh, Dr. Ben, I think that what we're trying to do here is that there's been such division in the prophetic movement where each one is standing on their own and prophets are just they're very isolated, they're very on their own and type of thing. And, you know, but there's going to be companies, prophets, especially in this time, uh, there needs to be a unity um, and an, a celebrating of voices, you know, instead of competition. And that is basically uh, what we are doing here. So uh, uh, because, you know, in your, I don't know how it is in the United States, but in the, in the mainstream churches in this nation, maybe other nations, they really cut out the prophetic voice so they give grace to everyone else but not the voice of god it was like nebuchadnezzar at a feast uh, he had everyone there that had, was of importance except the voice of god and when god's voice is, is is cut out his hand his finger will come into a place you know so uh i see people saying all over lynette thank you so much covering julia thank you so much may god bless you shani may god bless you uh maud may god bless you michelle thank you so much on Allah, thank you so much. Uh, Nelia, thank you so much. May God bless everyone here. Uh, I see Lucinda, I see Bika. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And uh, let us know if you enjoyed tonight as well. Let us know if you enjoyed tonight as well. Uh, I, I believe what uh, Prophet Charlie gave was so was so on time, uh, was so accurate. Um, you know, he is a he is a um, he is an accurate prophetic voice proven record of prophecies and prophetic words that has come to pass so i just see people saying all over fire emojis covering 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 awesome we're going to pray for all of you just now for those who have sown those who have given um out of the time i just want to uh see uh can we maybe put up the giving again i saw somebody asking here i want you guys once we put it up uh, uh just to take a screenshot turn the phone sideways take a screenshot um and it, it's the link is also pinned 
the comment section. So a uh, link is also pinned in the comments, guys. You can go to the link tree. I just see Daniel also saying there. Please put up the up again. There it is up again, guys. Listen, PayPal is the easy way. I know from those who are South Africa, also you know sometimes the giving avenues connected to the United States is very difficult. So Dr. Ben, so if I want to use Venmo, Cash App, or doesn't doesn't we yeah. use my card? box the cards all my bank cards you know can't even download the app or anything so for south africa really paypal i think is the best um for those it's just uh, south africa is just a bit of a mission so i know text doesn't work cash app venmo doesn't work in in south africa paypal is really the best option if you do give into our account please do um you know and it's meant for this let's say you find maybe our account to be easier just put hashtag um PC for prophetic convergence, and I'll know how to do it with Dr. Ben. That's just if somebody does that, Dr. Ben, because I know it's a bit of a mission for South Africa, you know. Yeah, we have a lot of South Africans who love it. I think South Africa is my second largest group that follows me on Facebook. It might be because of you. It might be because of my affinity, my coming in South Africa. Friends of God, what Prophet Leon said is so true. It's, especially within a prophetic, it just seems like, is even more scattered and divided. And you know what, Prophet Leon and myself, what we're doing, it's really pure because it's based off of friendship and honor. And and from that, we're wanting to build something. And um, I'm telling you, people of God, God is releasing a united company of prophets. We call it prophetic convergence. So I want to thank all of you for sowing and giving. You're sowing into a prophetic upgrade. You're sowing into this word, the anointing, the mantle. That is being released, amen. You're sowing into that. And, and if you love the prophets, if you love Prophet Leon, myself, Prophet Charlie, come on, show, show the Lord love because again, that gift opens something up in the supernatural realm. Amen. People are saying, I learned a lot. Powerful service. Much it was amazing. Glory be to God. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Patricia, go. God bless you. Yeah, so so many people are just commenting, covering, cover, keep sowing people of God, keep sowing, keep blessing, even if it's a dollar or, or one rand or two rands, doesn't matter. Keep sowing because you don't want to miss out on this moment because we're two days away, literally tomorrow, Tuesday, Wednesday. Tabernacles. Yes, uh, of, of Yom Kippur and then Tabernacles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, uh, Yom Kippur is the holiest day of the year. It's the holiest day in the Jewish calendar. So you want to get the seed in the ground, honor the men, men of God, the honor the God of man and the men of God, and watch what happens. Amen. But Prophet Leon, I truly enjoyed today's broadcast. I feel like that was just it was, I mean, I've loved all of our broadcasts, but this one was just just so dynamic. And I can't wait for the next one. I know you're you're gonna be busy traveling, but I can't wait to the next one. To my goodness. Come on, no, it'll be good. No, it'll be very good, Dr. Ben. I see people are still sewing or still saying and writing hashtags here on our side. They're saying, love the prophets. Awesome, awesome. And there's not anybody else really that's doing what we're doing right here, Dr. Ben. Yeah, I would say probably like, you know, Dr. Cindy Jacobs, you know, but. Oh, yeah, of course, but very rare. They do it very, very, very rare, very uh, scattered. You know, it's it's not. Yeah, and of course, there's Elijah List. And of course, we love Elijah List and we love Elijah Strings and we love Dr. Cindy Jacobs with Prophetic Dateline. But this is a younger emerging, I mean, in a sense, I mean, Prophet Leon, you're not, you're not that young. I'm not that young. We're not that emerging, even though we still are. Prophet Charlie isn't that young and emerging. I mean, you know, we all have our own distinctive mantles and ministries already, by the grace of God, right, right now. But yes. then this is really for the next generation. Yeah. For the future, for the days to come. Yes, yes. Prophet Daniel McCormick says fire from Rob Filler. This is rare for sure. So grateful. Glory be to God. Now, people of God, we want to pray. The link tree is there right now. We want to pray um, for, for a little bit. I, I want you, Prophet Leon, can you minister to my friend, Prophet Daniel McCormick? Okay, Daniel McCormick, he's, he's on my feed here. Daniel McCormick, just comment real quick. And I, I want my friend Prophet Leon to minister to you as the Lord leads. And then we're going to minister to a number of you right now. And if you want to receive prayer, just comment, pray for me, and share this on your wall. Please share this on your wall uh, because 
God's going to do something powerful here. Amen. Amen. Daniel, show yourself so that the prophet can see you here. So uh, uh, let me let me pray for him. Let me pray for him. Yes, sir. Uh, so uh, he's on your team, you're saying? Uh, he, he's a friend of mine. Yeah. Okay. Do you see him? He just came up. Father, right now, that your spirit, that your presence that is in this place will saturate everyone that is watching right now. That the fire of God will rest on those who are watching, that the fire of God will be present in this place. Connect and link my tongue with the tongue of the Spirit, my eyes with the eyes of the Spirit. Let my tongue utter the very words of an oracle. Uh, just tell me one thing is Daniel married? He is not, no. Prophet Daniel. Okay. So, because I kept seeing. Uh, something with a divine relationship that is coming when i say divine relationship i'm speaking of a marriage relationship you know that uh that is going to really set the course of certain things uh when i looked at just i i can only see on the live chat yeah, i just see the the little face where i mean the the little icon with it with the name that uh, uh uh so i i just saw that there's something that god is when you begin to orchestrate, it is going to uh, really set a certain direction that the Lord is having for you. I also saw a intense, yeah, I saw the words healing written over you. I don't know if that is a healing that is needed or that is healing that is a gift that's going to begin to come in the ministry. But the first thing I saw was healing. And then I saw this thing of a relationship that the Lord is showing me or a relationship that is coming when it comes to uh, this plan of him for your life for the Lord is saying that I'm beginning to establish and I'm beginning to to sit in place certain things I'm looking at the image and I'm seeing mountains and I'm seeing seeing things like uh, I'm seeing mountains and then I'm seeing uh, also an ocean but I'm seeing mountains and this connected to a certain ocean for the Lord is going to open up doors and I'm speaking right now in the next like uh, when it comes to the next 10 years of the season for for your life i saw uh things changing in a direction to the style of ministry the lord is saying i'm beginning to change god posts i'm beginning to change goal posts where you have reached or will obtain one and then it's going to be changed and lifted higher for the lord is saying i'm going to put pen to paper with you and uh there will be a penning to paper there will be a there will be a penning uh, ideas, penning to paper, but also thoughts and words that I've given you that is going to be put pen to the paper that will be scribed and written down. For the Lord saying, I will be, begin to open up doors for they'll be traveling, but then there'll be a sudden season of changing. I saw traveling increase, but then there'll be a season of changing, like I just mentioned now, where a change of direction is coming. And I'm going to cause to bring a adding on of gifts that will come upon your life. But I'll cause you to speak in the area of politics, and then I'll cause you to speak in an area of leadership. But these things shall come with time. And the Lord is saying, even though it felt like it was time already, it was just a taste of what is to come. For some, you've opened up a glimpse of things. It's like you have had visions, and then it felt like it was shut because it was a glimpse of things that is going to come so i've not that i've left you or shut down visions but i've given you a taste of the a foretaste of things and a foresight of things to come in your ministry i've given you a taste so that you can be hungry and run after that for the lord is saying then i shall open up pillars and i shall i shall cause pillars to be established and i shall open up doors that shall cause you to take you to the four corners of the nation once you've touched four corners of a nation you shall touch different four corners of the earth i see i see the nation of uk i see the nation of europe lighting up 
very strongly where I will cause supernatural doors to be open for you. For the Lord is saying, I will put an emerging voice inside of you. And uh, it's like a music note coming out of your mouth uh, that that is a that is going to touch certain areas and what favor and oil will be upon for the Lord is saying first see my hand when it comes to a divine relationship. Wow, that's good. I, I know Brother Daniel here, he, he <clears throat> released a... I just went on name, Sorry. meaning I don't know him. Yes, no, not, <laughs> no, not at all. Of course, of course, of course yes. <clears throat> and Prophet Charlie says, um, appreciate having him on and amen. Don't you just love Prophet Charlie and Prophet Leon? And we're going to be doing this more often, guys, as much as possible. And uh, I am dreaming of a prophetic convergence in due time, a conference conference on site of prophetic convergence in due time. Amen. But praise God, people are asking, pray for me, pray for me. So glory be to God. Ha, shatabata. Uh. If there's anyone else you uh, you feel led to pray for, probably let, let me. Pray. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I didn't hear you. There. Oh, I don't, I don't, yeah, people are commenting, pray for me, pray for me. I don't know if there's anyone else you feel led to pray for right now, but, uh, uh yeah, go ahead. Right. I think we'll have, I think one day, one, 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 one prophetic con convergence, I think we must do, uh, Dr. Bid, because I know, you know, when we're going on now, we're giving like very good teaching slash revelatory uh, words that's more, uh, corporate, but uh, there'll be a specific one where we'll zone in on one on one words. Yes. And it may happen be like a, a zoom or something you know zoom will be available so we'll get people from facebook and so on and on to yeah. zoom you know yes and we could even call it the prophet's mantle 2.0 <laughs> Dan daniel says thank you so much uh truly wrecked yeah i hope that was okay i didn't get any i, I just got a message now from you now dr ben i didn't see this or anything you know so i was just going what i felt in my spirit and what i saw we understand. And, um, shot, da, 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 da. Patricia Go says, PayPal me is not working. Dolores or Prophet Ivana, can you contact Patricia Go here? Not working. PayPal, I don't know why. Maybe PayPal is <clears throat> just crashed. You know, there's so, so much power coming, it crashed. And we understand these things happen. But glory be to God. I want to minister to minister to Laura Swan here. Laura Swan. I'm telling you, these names are just coming in so fast. It's like, it's like by shootings. Laura Swan. Um, yeah, lift up your hand, woman of God. You're from Louisville, Kentucky. I see <clears throat> for you, Laura Swan, there is a realm of prayer and intercession over you. I see angels over you. I see you hosting meetings and having uh, hubs and homes. Like there's something about home gatherings, home meetings house fires and uh, i saw just a very strong realm of glory just golden angels gold in your house in your room beautiful interior uh, interior decorating designs and i saw that in your house and i just sensed the cherub angels of gold were behind you and the lord says that people come to you for healing prayer and deliverance, and you're going to see family deliverance you have a great heart for deliverance in your community as well. I see marriages being restored. Marriages being restored. There is a gift for you to see marriages restored. Amen. So thank you, Lord, for that breakthrough over. I even forgot your name already, but I think it was Laura or something. <clears throat> but there is a gift to see marriages and families healed and restored in Jesus' name and the community. In Jesus' name, Amen. Let me know if that makes sense, woman. I, I even, I think it was Laura. I even forgot what your name was. Yeah. Yeah, Laura. <clears throat> Glory be to God. <laughs> I see so many people asking for prayer and so on, and uh, I think uh, we must, we know, uh, we must pray corporately over everyone that uh, everyone receives. I saw specifically just, I just want to touch on one name here. Let me just see. Uh, 
blend CJ. Blend CJ uh, uh, on uh, on my side. Blend CJ. I don't know if I'm, I'm pronouncing that correctly. It looks it looks Asian. Uh, just the just the image, the the name there. So blend CJ. Just to say, uh, when I looked, uh, the Lord is showing me a healing that is required on your side, and uh, that that will be released upon you. I see a healing that the Lord is going to be doing. And uh, you know, when we prophesy like this, I just get into short thing or so on just for the sake of time sake of speed i did a i did a prophecy day i think the biggest mistake of my life i did a prophecy day on telegram you know uh and our telegram literally crashed we had i don't know how many probably thirty thousand comments if not more fifty thousand sixty thousand comments it was going so fast I couldn't even see a name and uh, I prophesied that day probably over a hundred people individually you know and you, you don't see a Facebook profile people need to understand that you literally just see a name and you can have a fake name you can have somebody that pretends to be a guy that's a girl and so it's very dangerous I made a big mistake there, but we prophesied and we were just going by faith that day I mean it was uh, I 24 hours 24 hours of prophecy and uh, i was sitting it was it was crazy but um and and names were just coming uh you know so you just prophesy on the name and when you do that you can you cannot really go forensic or detail you just have to go on an impression that you get and uh you know just an impression a feeling and a quick image and and that it's when it comes to blend blend cj i see you say blend cj says amen amen Blen, i just saw the oh blend cj says yes you know uh, because i said healing and I, 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 I just sense when I looked, I saw that healing is needed. Uh, and, uh, you know, when I scanned over your name and what I do with the comments is I just try to look at it quick. And a lot of people might ask for prophecy, but I just feel late for one or two. You know, um, some people are just prophecy hoarders. They just want to come up. They don't really invest it into it. So the Spirit of the Lord will really point us to those who are genuine. You know, it is spirit unto spirit, depth unto depth, deep unto deep. Uh, that is drawn. So uh, it is not by our own power. It is by the power of the Holy Spirit. And it is God that knows the needs. So um, I'm fine, Dr. Ben. I don't know if we want to do a corporate prayer or if you feel led on, on your, your side. Yeah, let's, let's release a corporate prayer. And just according to what you shared, Prophet Leon, October 31st, we don't have the graphic up yet, but it's Halloween Day in the United States. But October 31st, I'm actually going to do a prophecy now where i'm just going to prophesy over everybody on the zoom so i'm going to uh do the bishop bill hammond thing right and uh, but uh so be on the lookout for that people of god but i want everybody just lift up your hands right now lord we thank you everyone yes. that was released the white stone of acquittal yes this is the year 5783 2023 it's the year of recompense retribution it's the year where God is bringing you into a company and family of believers. And there's going to be payback and payment. So, Father, we thank you that every snake bite is being dissolved. And in midst of these chaotic times of transition and change, your people will be the head and not the tail. You will be the head and not the tail. If you believe it and receive it, give the Lord a mighty clap. And we speak healing to everyone who needs healing in their bodies. We speak life and healing resurrection power to every single person who has an infirmity. You're going through some infirmity, some affliction in your body. In Jesus' mighty name, release the power of the Holy Ghost from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. In Jesus' name, deliverance and healing now. Amen and amen. It's finished. It's done. In Jesus' name, it's settled in the courts of heaven. And all of those who receive and believe, shout hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a mighty clap. My goodness. Prophet amen. Leon, I appreciate you, sir. Everybody, I'm out of Prophet Leon for his gracious time. I know you're coming to the stateside soon. I hope to see you. Yes. You know? I hope to see you. <laughs> but I'm the states are so big. Yeah. Absolutely. You know. But everybody no, thank you. Go. Thank you so much, Dr. Ben. Yes, sir. We appreciate you and do this soon and uh can't wait to converge with you again, Prophet Leon. I appreciate it. I'm gonna see you afterwards. 
Amen. Absolutely. Everybody, let's give it up for the man of God properly on the email prophet Charlie chat. Listen, guys, I even want you to give a clap to Dolores and David. They are our media producers behind the scenes. Give them a mighty clap as well. And we have so many moderators and team members. But people of God, did you enjoy today's broadcast? Listen, um, as we're about to close, I want to share some quick announcements. Listen, tonight, tonight, it's Monday here, but tonight I'm doing a Zoom webinar on times and seasons, okay? Times and seasons. I'm doing a free Zoom webinar. Uh, we're going to talk about the oil of Issachar, the Issachar anointing, how to discern your Kairos moments, how to bend time, redeem times. So I want to invite you. It's a free Zoom webinar. And um, I mean, our Zoom webinars have just been off the charts. We've had such an incredible family, uh, just committed group of people. So if you want to grow deeper in the Lord and understand the realm of times and seasons, Come and join us tonight, all right? After that, our next webinar is called The Breaker Anointing. I want to talk about the ox anointing, the breaker anointing. That's something I carry. I know Prophet Leon, Prophet Charlie carries. But who needs breakthrough? Amen. And breakthrough is found in a person named Jesus. But breakthrough is also an anointing of the Holy Ghost, an anointing of the Spirit of God. So I want to talk about the breaker anointing, where you can live. In a life of perpetual breakthrough blessing 24-7 all the time. Whether you're in South Africa, Uganda, Botswana, UK, America, Canada, Mexico, doesn't matter where you are. The breaker anointing, it is the living power of God that never dies. That has not succumbed to the cultures of the world. So come and join us for that. All of our Zoom webinars are now free. And uh, also this coming month of October, I'm going to be in... What's the next one? I believe Colorado, or is it Central California? You could just put up the next one, Mr. Lawrence. I'm going to be in, and, and Prophet Leon, we got to try to get you to the West Coast, my friend. You're going to be in, in the East Coast this whole time. <laughs> we got to try to get you to the West Coast here. But uh, next, uh, sorry, Colorado. Yes, I'm going to be in Colorado next week. My first time ever ministry in Colorado. So, Come and join us in Colorado and Grand Junction, Colorado. Glory Hub meetings, Colorado. It's going to be powerful. I love ministering with other people because I, I believe in the power of synergy and collaboration, but there's something powerful happens. Extended moves of God, like Prophet Charlie Shamp shared. And then after that, I'm also in a Tascadero, California, near Central California, Central Valley, Central Coast, with myself and good friend, Apostle Chazen Strickland. So go ahead and join us if you're in those areas, whether you're in North, South, Central California, Nevada, Arizona, Washington, right down. This is going to be super, uber powerful. Amen. And last but not least, I want to talk about my group mentorship. I have an online group mentorship called 7M Glory Equip. Listen, I believe mentoring true discipleship equal the glory in your Fivefold ministry in the seven mountains of God. True mentorship is needed in these days. And it will be my honor to walk with you, to mentor you, to pour into you more exclusively. You'll be part of a private online group. And these people are world changers. They are so dynamic. And uh, in the online group, you have access to online portals, online, uh, you know, access. And, and all uh, we have private zooms at least twice a month okay so i would love to mentor you i would love to walk with you more personally and uh, get to know you more so if that interests you go ahead and join us you can go to benlimglobal.com all of our informations this is dr pastor ben lim your host of prophetic convergence one of your favorite voices i love you god bless you i hope you enjoyed today's prophetic convergence myself prophet leon dupree and prophet charlie champ and get ready for what God is about to do. God bless you. Love you. Make sure you follow us, like us, share this on your wall, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. Soon we'll be on Discord. God bless.